Today's story time is from a follower and she needs advice. I didn't want to tell this one because it seemed kind of personal, but it'll probably help other girls who are going through the same issues. Hopefully TikTok doesn't take down this video. By the way, we're calling her Brandy and she's 15. So growing up, Brandy lived with her mom and her dad and occasionally she would be with her grandparents whenever her parents were arguing for a long period of time. She practically grew up with her grandparents. She even had her own room. But whenever she come back home, she would notice her mom wearing sweaters and chokers. It was this one summer where all she wore was jackets. She said her mom claimed to be cold. Anyways, earlier this year for Mother's Day, Brandy wanted to surprise her mom. So she bought gifts from the store, came into the house quietly, and busted into her room to surprise her. When she came in, her mom was half naked and she had a lot of bruises on her neck, arms, just about everywhere but her face. There's more to the story. Part 2 will be up soon. So when Brandy busts into her room, she noticed her mom had a lot of bruises on her body. Her mom quickly covers up and tells her to hold on. Brandy asked her if she was okay and did someone do something. Her mom said no. So she ran downstairs and she asked her dad why did her mom have so many bruises. Her dad said she fell down the stairs and that she's okay. She was a bit confused so she went back upstairs to her mom's room and asked her why she had so many bruises. Her mom began to say, oh, they're not bruises. It was just an allergic reaction to something I ate and now I have rashes on my body. Brandy then gives her mom the gifts and was still confused because her dad told a whole different story. But she left the situation alone and after that, the past months, every time she would get back home from her grandparents, she would notice the bruises were getting worse and now she's assuming that her dad is abusing her mom and she doesn't know what to do or say because she's never seen her dad as a violent person. But please comment down below some advice. This story time is from a follower on why she regrets getting breast implants. She had breast implants and then she had to get them removed and now she has no left breast at all. She says she wants everyone to know her experience before making a decision of getting them. By the way, we're calling her Chloe and at the time she was 23. Spring of 2018 is when she felt ready to get work done on her breasts. Chloe was always the skinny type and she felt like her breasts would never grow because she's been an A cup since 7th grade and she said she wasn't ever insecure about them. It was just something she wanted for herself. So she saved up to get the procedure done and she went to her appointment and then finally got her implants put in. The doctor told her it would take 6 to 8 weeks to heal and 3 months for everything to sit in place and she'd be alright. So she expected the soreness and tenderness but even after 3 months her breasts were still in pain and at 4 months the pain was going away but she couldn't feel either her breasts and she noticed her left breast had turned completely black and that's not even the worst part life of part two this is part two of why chloe regrets getting breast implants like i said earlier chloe got her breast implants done and she couldn't feel either of them and her left breast had turned completely black it didn't happen in one day. She saw discoloration at first, but then it gradually turned black. Also, those four months, she felt fatigued, nauseous, sick all the time. After seeing what was happening to her breasts, she went to the emergency room and they had planned to take them out. The implants were black. She was told it was because fungus had made its way into her bloodstreams. They ended up taking both of her implants out and her left breast she had to get completely removed because the tissue was dying and now her breast is more deflated than before she got the implants. End of the story, she don't think everyone's body is made for these type of surgeries and she wished she was told this that this could be a complication before even getting them. This story times how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me with my best friend. Okay, so my birthday is when I introduced my two favorite people in the world. My boyfriend and my old childhood best friend. We went out to the club along with some other friends. We all had a great time and they were also able to talk, which I was glad about because they'd be able to be comfortable around each other so it wouldn't be awkward. After the night was over, my boyfriend asked if they could exchange contacts and I was filled with liquid courage and thought it was cool because then they would be close. I don't know. But fast forward a couple Couple months I went on a business trip for a week to Florida but the trip cut short because I got finished doing everything and was able to come home two days early so I wanted to surprise my boyfriend and I bought some food from his favorite restaurants when I got home I called for my boyfriend but no response then I went upstairs and heard moaning in my bedroom so I bust in and saw my boyfriend laying in bed with my best friend if y'all want to know what happened after that let me know down below in the comments 
This is part two of how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me with my best friend. So after I came back home two days early from my business trip, I caught my boyfriend in bed with my best friend. Friend. My heart has never burned so hard. I blacked out and I went crazy. I jumped on the bed and started beating him. And he was stronger than me and was able to pin me down. He was naked, but he was over me, so I was able to squeeze his you-know-what. And he crawled in the corner, panicking. My best friend seemed like she was trying to put on clothes and rush out, but she wasn't getting away easy. So I snatched the clothes she was trying to put on, threw it out the window. I snatched her up by the hair, dragged her out of the house, and she stood outside naked. And I didn't care because I never felt so betrayed. Then I went back to the room and it seemed like my boyfriend was trying to get up and put on clothes and grab his keys. But I snatched the keys out of his hands and flushed them down the toilet. At that point, I got fed up. So I grabbed my taser and told him to get out. And I left both of them outside naked. My boyfriend was trying to get back in the house. So I called the police about trespassers trying to get inside my house and trying to attack me. If you want to know what happened after that, let me know down below in the comments. This is part three of how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me with my best friend. So after I caught them in bed together, I kicked them out of the house completely naked. When my boyfriend was trying to get back in, I called the police about trespassers trying to get inside my house and attacking me. And it was my house. I paid the bills. His name wasn't on the deed, and they were both arrested. My boyfriend even tried to run and hide, but they tackled him and pinned him down. And you know, it felt good to see, but I was still hurt. And the crazy thing is, three years later, they are now together. My ex-best friend even got pregnant. She tried to invite me to the baby shower, but I threw the invitation away. Instead, I sent them a cute bag of dirty diapers. This story time is how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So I've been with my ex three years prior to breaking up. We met at a party. He seemed pretty cool. And from there, he was really nice and different from any guy I met. Any other guy I talked to didn't seem interested in me but him. It was like he was obsessed with me. He even said that he loved me after two weeks of talking. I thought it was cute, but I wasn't trying to get serious so soon. He came off very strict of what he wanted, and one of those things were me. And after six months of meeting this great guy, he completely changed. He became physically and emotionally abusive. I even tried to leave at some points of the relationship. One day, he asked if I could spot him some gas money because he needed to pick up his mom's medicine. So I trusted my boyfriend of three years and gave him my card to take the money out the ATM. When he came back and gave me my card, he went ghost for two days. And of course, I was upset and I blew up his phone, afraid of what happened to him. When I checked my bank statement, it showed that he took out $5,000. If y'all want to know what happened after that, This is part two of how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So after he ghosted me for two days, I checked my bank account and my balance came up to $5,000 total. And it seemed like he went to different ATMs because he took a little amount and it all added up to $5,000. I was so upset, I tried calling and texting his friends, but my messages weren't going through, almost like they blocked me. Then I went ahead and called his mom and luckily she picked up. I asked if she'd seen him and she said she just saw him today and that she thought we we broke up i was like he told you we broke up and she said yes he even brought his girlfriend kayla over i was so furious she even told me that he helped her move into her new place and that he paid for her first and last month rent and it was near the mall in our area and i knew exactly what apartment complex she was talking about if y'all want to know what happened after that let me know down below in the comments This is part three of how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So after he lied and told everyone we broke up, I found out he was cheating on me with another girl and used the money I gave him to give her her first and last month rent. I knew exactly what apartment the girl lived in because his mom had told me. I went to the front desk and asked if there was a Kayla and I lied and said it was for a family emergency. So the guy at the front desk was able to reach her. She had came down, she walked to the desk and the guy at the desk pointed her towards me. I walked up to her and asked if she knew who I was, and she said no, and I broke everything down to her, telling her everything I were a boyfriend lied about. And she was so nice, she had no clue that any of this was going on. She even cried, but I told her to stop because I had a revenge plan and that he was going to get everything that was coming to him. And I asked if she wanted to join, and luckily she said yes. So if y'all want to know what happened after that, let me know down below in the comments. And this is when it gets juicy. 
part four of how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So after I met Kayla, the girl he was cheating on me with, we created the ultimate get back plan. So she had to completely act like she never met me. She told him she wanted to meet up and go on a surprise vacation and that she wanted to do something fun. And him being dumb, he agreed to it. She told him to pack a bag of his nicest clothes and bring his passport. He came to her place with all his things and they got in a car. I was on the floor in the back seat and he had no clue. So she drove really far from home and stopped by the gas station because she wanted to get frisky. She told him to take off his shoes. Him being dumb, he took off his shoes. She told him to get out of the car real quick because she needed to get the surprise from under the seat. And I popped up and he jumped back. Then I closed and locked the door. He was lost and got mad and started yelling at me, calling me all types of names. If y'all want to know what happened after that, please let me know down below in the comments. This is part five of how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So after I popped up and surprised my ex, he was so shook he was not expecting it and I quickly closed the door. He banged on the door telling us to open it up and give him his things. I pulled down the window and tossed him five cents saying, have fun walking five hours home with the five cents that you should have had before cheating on me. And Kayla quickly drove off. It was funny because he had on no shoes. When we left, we took some of his Gucci outfits he broke, cut them up, and tossed them out the window. Some of the clothes we kept and sold them to people we knew, and his passport and wallet and cards and ID was tossed out the window too. After the whole situation was over, we went to Kayla's apartment. She gave me back the money that my ex stole from me, which was kind of hard to do, and we split the money that we made off of selling his clothes. And we're now friends. As for our ex, he could stay where we left him, the streets. This story time is why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert and we're calling her Kim. So me and Kim became friends at school. Over time, we realized we lived close together. So she started coming over to my house and I started going over to hers. She had five brothers and she was the only girl. Whenever I'd come over to her house, I'd say hello to everyone, but her dad was always excited to see me. He'd immediately run and give me a hug. Over the past couple months, he'd give me a hug and a kiss on the cheek. He said that I was his new little girl. I felt uncomfortable with it, but I went and told my friend Kim, and she said, he's just glad you're here, and you're like family now. I was like, okay, I guess, and I would just ignore it. Thanksgiving come up, and I went over to her house for a plate. Her dad opened up the door and gave me a hug and a kiss, as usual. I walked in the house, and he said, you need to eat to keep that booty plump. I laughed in nervousness. He slapped and squeezed my butt. There's more that happened after this. Let me know if you guys want a part two. This is part two of why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert. So remember how I told y'all I came over for Thanksgiving? Her dad slapped and squeezed my butt. I was weirded out, but I laughed to hide how nervous and anxious I was. After I get a plate of food and I sit down with Kim, I told her her dad slapped my butt. And she was like, yeah, okay, as if she didn't believe me. So again, I ignored the situation. As the day goes on, everyone is playing board games, laughing, and eating desserts. I had cheesecake, and I'm lactose intolerant, and you know how that went. I left the family for a few minutes, and I go to the bathroom. When I was all finished, I opened up the door, and there was Kim's dad just sitting there smiling at me. I was like, oops, my bad. You were probably waiting for a while. Here you go. And I tried to move out of the way, but then he says, I don't need to go to the bathroom. He pushes me back in by the hips and locks the door. It gets really bad after this. Y'all let me know if I should make a part three. This is part three of why I stopped being friends with the girl because her dad was a pervert. So after her dad pushes me back into the bathroom and locks the door, he's sitting there smiling at me and I asked him very nervously if I did something wrong. He was like, yes, you haven't been spending time with daddy and he likes to jiggle my breasts in a weird way. At this point, I was backing up because he starts acting weird. Then he starts unzipping his pants and gets closer to me. And guys, their bathroom wasn't that big. I immediately took the Windex that was on top of their toilet and sprayed it into his eyes and quickly ran out of the bathroom. After this, her dad starts yelling. While I'm coming downstairs, everyone asks what's going on. I told the whole family what Kim dad has done and one of their little brothers yells at me calling me a whore. I then went to Kim saying, you gotta believe me, that's what happened. She's like, my dad would never do anything like that. Her mom walks up to me and tells me that I should leave. I start crying and then her mom yells at me and tells me to go home. So I left and went home crying. After that, I never went back over to her house.
This story time is how I caught my uncle filling on my cousin, in other terms, his daughter. So, when I was 11, my cousin was throwing a party, then afterwards, a sleepover. By the way, we're calling her Adrian, and she was turning 13. So, the day of the party, me and my other sister were dropped off by my dad, and we were dropped off very early, maybe five hours before the party, and that's because he had to go to work, and my uncle didn't mind taking us all together to the party. Plus, we got to help them set up for the party. When we arrived, we went to Adrian's room, and she got her hair done. It looked so good. When we were talking to her, she just seemed so sad. And you know, when you're younger, you can tell when things are off. She seemed bratty, and she would say that she hated her mom and her dad. To me, I'm like, why? She had the perfect life. Fast forward, she throws the party, and when it's all over, we go back to her house for the slumber party. We ate snacks, played games, watched movies till we fell asleep. I'm a light sleeper. And when everyone was asleep, my uncle came in the living room, tapped on Adrian's shoulder, and told her she gotta go to sleep in her bed tonight. Let me know if I should. This is part two of how I caught my uncle touching on my cousin, in other terms, his daughter. So early before, I told you guys everyone went to sleep. We were all asleep in the living room floor in front of the TV, and my uncle tapped on Adrian, telling her that she needed to sleep in her bed tonight. I'm a light sleeper, and I was woke the whole time. Adrian was still asleep, so my uncle picked her up and took her to her room. I was confused on why she had to go to sleep in her room because everyone would sleep downstairs. So 15 minutes passed. I'm still waiting there bored. I don't know what came to me, but I was just curious to see if Adrian was up. I mean, she might have been because I would have woke up if I was switched to a new room. I don't know. I just went up. When I got upstairs, I opened the door. Adrian was asleep, but she was completely naked and my uncle was sitting right next to her touching on her. I'm out of time. Let me know if I should make a part three. This is part three of how I caught my uncle touching on my cousin, in other terms, his daughter. Like I said, I couldn't sleep, so I went upstairs to see if Adrian was up. When I opened up the door, Adrian was asleep, but she was naked, and my uncle was touching on her. I got scared and was about to run downstairs, but he ran after me, covered up my mouth, and sat me back down in the room. I started crying, and he said if I didn't shut up, he was going to beat me, so I shut right up. In the midst of it all... When he was standing up, I didn't notice before, but he had on no pants. I started sniffling, and the noise I was making had woke Adrian up. She looked at me, then looked at herself and saw that she had on no clothes. She jumped back and immediately wrapped herself up in a blanket. I started crying again, and my uncle said, If you don't shut up, girl, I'm going to smack you. Then Adrian yelled at him and said, don't hurt her. And immediately, he popped her and said, what I tell you about talking back? And from there... Adrian just sat there frozen, touching her face, and I shut right up. This is part four. I caught my uncle touching my cousin, in other terms, his daughter. So, after my uncle popped Adrian, she got real quiet. Then out of nowhere, she said it burst out crying. My uncle was trying to tell her to be quiet, but she just got louder. I don't know what it was, but as soon as I saw her crying, I started crying too. Immediately, Adrian's mom busted in the room asking what's going on. My uncle was trying to convince her that everything was okay. She grabbed Adrian and saw that she was naked. Adrian's mom started to get upset. At this point, everyone was waking up. She took both me and Adrian out of the room and yelled at my uncle, telling him to throw his clothes on and go. We went to the bathroom and she asked us questions. I told her what I saw and Adrian told her everything. Even things I didn't even heard about. It seemed like her mom had speculation that this was all going on, and her mom started crying. Towards the end, I really don't know what they did afterwards. I told my dad, and from there, me and my sister was never allowed over my cousin's house, and I haven't seen her in eight years. Story time of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man when I was 14, but most people from my country, it is called arranged marriage, and it happened to a lot of girls. My family was poor, but the guy I was marrying had a lot of money and promised to take care of me and my family. He also had a six-year-old son, but he didn't like me. I had met him once before when my mother introduced him to us. She allowed me to stay with him alone. He was very touchy. He told me I was very beautiful and would spoil me because pretty girls like me deserve pretty things. After he left, I told my parents that I was scared to marry him and that I'll do more housework and I'll take care of my other little sisters. My father yelled at me and told me no. So the next week, I went throughout the whole wedding crying. My mom told me to stop because I was messing up my makeup. After we had got married, a couple months later, he grew very abusive. Part two will be up next.
This is part two of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man and I was 14. So we got married and a couple months into the relationship, he became abusive. Whenever my food tasted nasty or something wasn't clean right, he called me a lazy wife and told me I was no good and he should have married someone else. His six-year-old son had no respect for me. The little boy scratched me, would yell at me, throw stuff at me, and my husband wouldn't do anything about it. I would tell him that I didn't like how his son was treating me, and he stood up and tells me to stay in my place and tells me I'm just a bad mother. I'd cried every night, wishing I could go back home to my mother and father. Two years later, when I turned 16, I found out I was pregnant. He was so happy about it, and for once, he treated me so sweet. He would cook for me, clean, and told his son to be nice because his little brother was in there. When we found out the baby was a girl, he got mad and walked out on me. Part three will be up next. This is part three of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man and I was 14. So my husband was excited that I was pregnant, but when he found out I was having a baby girl, he got very upset and walked out of the room. When we got home, he started treating me nasty again. He then started putting his hands on me. He was just very angry at me and never wanted to see his daughter. It took him three weeks before picking her up. But even then, he wanted nothing to do with her. As years went on, I became quiet and I wouldn't speak to him. I would just make sure our home was clean and the children were taken care of. He would just get upset with me that I wouldn't speak to him and accuse me of cheating. He claimed that I was sleeping with other men and that our daughter is probably not even his child. I never understood why because I was always home because he didn't allow me to go out. But I soon realized he only accused me of cheating because he was cheating the entire time. Part 4 is coming up soon. This is part four of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man and I was 14. My husband would always accuse me of cheating, but I found out he only accused me because he was cheating on me the entire time. Ended up finding out because his son told me. And like I said earlier, his son never liked me in the first place. So when I had made him upset, he randomly said, that's why my dad has a new woman. I was off about it, so I went to ask my husband about it and he admitted to it. He was very blunt about it, and he told me it was because the lady tempted him. I believed him at the time, but as time grew on, I started to become very insecure. I'd do whatever he want, but it was never good enough because he still kept stepping out of our marriage. On my 19th birthday is when I realized I had to figure out a way for me and my daughter to leave him. He didn't even say happy birthday to me, and that was my husband. I had no money. I didn't own anything, but I took a chance. So I packed whatever I could, and I planned for me and my daughter to run away while he went to work. Perfect. Y'all believe? I will never hang out with a white boy again. <laughs> this white boy came to pick me up. Because, you know, I was trying to get that little diddly dick dick. And as soon as we get into the car, he's smiling at first, and then he starts looking at me weird. I'm just like, okay, whatever. So we drive to his house. <laughs> his mom is... I'm not gonna be able to get through this. His mom is there and she looks fucking terrified when she looks at me. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm probably the first bad bitch that he brought to this house. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we go into his room. You know, we're just chilling, watching a movie, whatever. And then his mom pulls him out of the room. When he comes back, he asks me, do you need to go to the hospital? I'm like, um, no. Why the fuck would I need to go to the hospital? <laughs> he looks at me. He's like, oh, me and my mom noticed that your scalp is peeling off. <gasps> it was my fucking lace. My fucking lace, friend. I'm like, what? And I run into the bathroom. And I'm looking in the mirror. I look in the mirror and I see a whole part of my lace is lifted up. Once I told him it was my hair, he got mad and called me a catfish. He made me Uber myself home. This is why it's better to have one friend that you hang out with regularly instead of having a big group of friends. And trust me, you're going to want to listen to this story time. So when I was a sophomore in high school, I was kind of going through an identity crisis and low-key still am. I went to a predominantly white school for the majority of my life. So let's just say I was extremely whitewashed. It was one of those times in my life where if a white person said the N-word around me, I would just laugh. Not because I didn't know it was wrong, but because I wanted to be accepted and I wanted to be like everybody else and I seeked validation. Sophomore year was really when I started to become who I am today. I wanted to learn way more about my culture and my background. So I started started becoming friends with people from other schools that are more diverse. Eventually, I met this group of girls. And I thought these girls were going to be the sweetest girls I would ever meet. Now, this friend group was serving flavor. I'm talking diverse to the T. One night, we decided that we were going to spend the night at one of the girls' houses. Let's call this girl Sally. I kept getting lost on the way to Sally's house, and I thought it was because I didn't know the area that well. Keep in mind, that's what I thought was the reason. I get there, and we watch like four or five movies before I end up falling asleep. And when I wake up, I was in a room full of grown-ass men staring at me. 
Story time part two of why it's better to have one loyal friend instead of a big group of friends. I forgot to mention in part one that when I arrived, the men were already there. Mind you, we were in sophomore year. These men looked like they were in college. So I was already a little thrown off, but I trusted it because I was with my friend. When I wake up, these men are like staring at me, but they try to look away really fast, but I could tell that they were staring at me. I start thinking the worst of the worst. I try to think of any possible way that I could get out of there, whether it was physically or mentally. So I pretend to fall asleep just to escape the reality of it. But then one of the men at the bottom of the bed starts it's rubbing my feet. I immediately kick my legs so I can get his hands off. Now I'm thinking he's gonna be mad and I'm gonna get fucking attacked. So I try to make small talk to loosen the tension. So I look at the guys and I'm like, hey, do you know where the girls went? One of them looks at me and says, oh, they went home. So I'm like, um, I thought this was Sally's house. And they say nothing. So at this point, I think I'm being set up. I try my best to not make it seem like I'm suspicious of them. I casually act like I need to pee. Walk into the bathroom and I see a window. Automatically something clicks in my mind. Get the fuck out of there. Making part three right now. Part three of why you should have one loyal friend instead of hanging out with a big group of friends. So I go into the bathroom and there's a window. I'm thinking to myself, I would be so dumb. I would be so extremely incredibly stupid to go back into that room full of grown ass men that I've never met before. Instead of making my escape through that window right here, right now. So I trusted my gut and I got the fuck out of there. Mind you, I'm in my PJs right now. No shoes, no socks. I'm making my great escape. Call me Pablo Escobar. While I was doing all of it, I was in disbelief. Like I cannot believe that I'm escaping like right now. Like that's this is actually insane. Like, I did what I believed was right at the moment and honestly that decision might be the reason why I'm alive right now So I make a run for it. I immediately run to the front of the neighborhood I hide behind some trees and then I call my sister I call my sister instead of my parents because my mom was the one who drove me there and if She knew that something bad happened. She wouldn't have let me go out again I'm frantically explaining everything on the phone to my sister. She literally speeds to come get me Once she gets there I immediately hop in her car and we get the fuck out of there on our way home I get a text from Sally last part is part four. I'm making that right now Part four of why you should have one loyal friend instead of having a big group of friends. So I'm on my way home and I get a text from Sally. Hey girl, where are you? We went to the gas station to get some milkshakes. You could have came with, but you were already asleep. I didn't even respond. I just blocked all of them because I know damn well that they were not getting milkshakes. Because one, why didn't they wake me up to get milkshakes? Because I wasn't the first person to fall asleep. I'd never fall asleep first at somebody's house with a big group of people. I saw somebody else who looked like they were sleeping, so I thought that I was going to fall asleep too. Two, why were all those grown ass men there? Nobody told me that they were going to be there. Like I said, we were sophomores. These men were in college. Maybe even graduated from college. They were grown. Three, why would she lie about it being her house? Four, why did the boy say she went home? I remember when I said I kept getting lost because I didn't know the area. Once I went back to look through the messages that I had with those girls to see if there was anything fishy going on, I noticed that they were all sending me different addresses. Either one number would be off or a letter would be off. They definitely were planning something because they were trying to get me there late. I haven't seen or talked to those girls since then. Story time at the time I dated a married man and his wife walked in on us. Mind you, I am 17, child. I promise it will all make sense at the end, just keep watching. This literally happened in June. I turned 17 in May. I had just turned 17. It just makes everything worse. Let's just get into it. So at this time, my TikTok page was like plummeting. It was after I exposed my racist school and I started getting all those death threats. I basically had to stay off TikTok for a while and social media in general. So I wasn't really getting a lot of notice from anyone. But one day I noticed that this guy was liking all of my videos. Let me tell you this, man. <laughs> This man was extra fine. So I was like, let me go ahead and shoot my shot. But honestly, if anyone were to blow up my notice like that, I'd probably follow them anyway. So I followed him. Uh, worst mistake of my life. The thing though is he only had a profile picture, but he did have a video. In the video, he was using a filter, so his face was covered up. But his hair and his bone structure matched his profile picture. So I was like, okay, this is him. I'm not gonna get catfish. Everything is good right anyway so he dms me on tiktok he gives me his number text him and we start talking he tells me that he's 19 wait until you find out his actual age part two part two of the time i dated a married man and his wife walked in on us so yeah he tells me that he's 19 i'm 17 so i was thinking it's only two years and we're both at a very mature age i was like okay that's fine so we start talking more and we click like this i really thought that i found the one for me we had the same personality same humor we're interested in the same things i had been single for 17 years so i was excited we keep talking and we plan to hang out one day he said he wanted to take me on a little date or whatever i was like free food 
say fuck the Liz. So he comes to pick me up and we go out to a restaurant. Everything's good, I go home, everything's fine. After that we plan to hang out again and we go on another date. Everything's good, everything's fine. Get home safely and I think everything's going good. But things start to get a little weird because the more as time went on the more we would text and the more we would call. He started to randomly hang up when we were on FaceTime or he would randomly put me on mute or he would talk really quiet. I would ask him like why he was doing that and he would say oh my phone is glitching. Me being a dumb bitch I believed it. I was like you know what all men aren't trash. Let me give him a chance. We continued to hang out we hang out like four or five times until the night his wife came home. Part three of the time I dated a married man and his wife walked in on us. Okay, so since everything's going good, we continue to go on dates. We go on three or four dates and the last time we hung out was at his house. I was kind of confused on how he had a house at 19, but he said that he had a family business that he invested in. That's how he made his money, so he basically had his life set up for him. So I'm thinking, child, oh, he got money. He's cute. He has a nice personality. He's sweet. Like, what could go wrong? Here's what went wrong. So like I said, the last time we hung out was at his house. We're at his house. Everything's good. We're watching a movie and... A knock on the door. It's like, okay, it's probably just like, I don't know, delivery. He's gonna tell me, go in that room. Like, trying to rush me. Like, go, 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 go in that room, go in that room. Obviously, something fishy is going on here if he's trying to rush me to hide. So I'm like, uh-uh, what's going on? His wife, who is the one who was knocking on the door, heard my voice and starts yelling. So now I'm like what did i just get myself into i am not trying to fight nobody today i'm definitely not gonna fight over no boy so i'm just looking at him like you got some explaining to do so he goes and opens the door for his wife and this is what happened story time at the time i dated a married man and his wife walked in on us so i'm at his house and his wife knocks on the door she's yelling she's clearly mad and i'm like i am not about to get beat up i have to defend myself because we all know those girls that get mad at the girl that their boyfriend cheats on them with instead of getting mad at the boyfriend so i had to prepare myself i put my shoes on i had some rings in my purse i put those on i was ready to fight thinking i was gonna get attacked so i had to defend myself yeah so he goes to open the door for his wife she walks in and stares dead at me and i'm just like like the most awkwardest thing ever she looks at him and screams you have kids at that point i was ready to go because i know i just got catfished she starts going off on him and i have really bad anxiety so i zone out and she looks at me and she goes who the hell are you I snap back and i'm like i'm 17 i don't know what's going on i don't want any part of this i'm so fucking scared i just wanted to get out of there it's like i did not know i will leave right now so i left i called a friend to come get me because he's the one who drove me to his house i don't know what happened with them but i received this text message an hour later from his phone Part five of the time I dated a married man and his wife walked in on us. So after I received that text message from her, here it is again. I texted her back and she blocked me right after. I forgot to add that in the last part when she came in and started yelling. And then she looked at me and she was like, who the hell are you? I just automatically screamed my age because I was so scared. She was like, stop lying to me because this man is damn near 30. I don't know his exact age, but he's around 30 years old. This means I had just turned 17. I was going on dates and hanging out with a man who was damn near 30 years old. The whole entire time, I was thinking that he was 19. I guess nowadays you really cannot tell people's age. Someone could be 16 looking 25. He could be damn near 30 looking 19. And the most disgusting part of all of this is the fact that the whole entire time, he knew that I was 17. Story time on how I found out my best friend was five months pregnant with my boyfriend's baby. And not only was she pregnant by my boyfriend, no. He was obsessed with me and tried to replace me. Seats included. Strap in. Forgot to mention, my best friend is 16, my boyfriend is 18, and I am 17. So me and my best friend would have been friends for two years. Me and my boyfriend had only been dating for like three, four months. I told my best friend everything about my relationship. He knew about every single argument, every single breakup. Eventually, it got to the point where we all three would hang out with each other. I was extremely close with my boyfriend and my best friend. They were basically the people closest to me in my life at that time. But we all started telling each other everything. But it started to get weird when I noticed that some things I told my best friend, my boyfriend would all of a sudden know about, and some things I only told my boyfriend, my best friend would all of a sudden know about which means that they were communicating without me knowing so um that's suspicious at one point we all went to this party together they all of a sudden just disappear and i'm looking for them for like half an hour calling texting no response so i start asking people this one specific person said oh i saw them go upstairs holding hands just the two of them i was ready to kill her too Part two of how I found out my best friend was five months pregnant with my boyfriend's baby. Not only did she get pregnant by him, no. He was obsessed with me and tried to replace me. But we're at the party and my boyfriend and my best friend are nowhere to be seen. So I ask around and someone tells me that they saw them go upstairs together. So upstairs I go. I see my boyfriend and he's just talking to some friends. So I'm like, uh, we all friends. I want to talk too. Where the fuck were you? He's like, oh, I was just up here, you know, chilling with the homies. 
all standing in front of a door and then I see my best friend walk out of the bathroom that's right across that door. At the time I didn't really put the pieces together that they just got freaky. But several months after the party I did start to realize something. My best friend was gaining weight. Everybody else noticed it too. And during these months my boyfriend also got a new job. We couldn't see each other as much. But like I said everyone noticed that my best friend was gaining weight. And rumors started to spread that she was pregnant. But no one knew who was the dad. Like I said me and my best friend told each other everything. So if she was going to tell anybody who the baby daddy was it would have been me. But I had no clue. She said she was just gaining weight. Then she texted me and asked if me, her, and my boyfriend could all meet up somewhere to talk. That talk did not end well. Stay tuned for part three. Part three of how I found out my best friend was five months pregnant with my boyfriend's baby. Not only was she pregnant, she was obsessed with me and tried to replace me. Receipts included child. Okay, so rumors are going around that my best friend is pregnant. She texts me and says she wants me, my boyfriend, and her to all meet up somewhere. All three of us have not hung out together in a while, so I was down. So we meet up at her house. My parents weren't home, we had the house to ourselves, so it was just the best place to meet up. But when I get there, my boyfriend and my best friend are already sitting on the couch. I cannot believe my eyes, child. This girl had a pregnancy test in her hand. I was like, put that shit away. I'm not fucking playing with you right now. Put that shit away she basically tells me that it's exactly what it looks like she told me that it happened at the party by this time it was april i'm thinking child that's five months they was mute for five months i was dating this man who is 18 about to be 19 and got my just turned 16 best friend pregnant but she wasn't apologetic good sis was laughing something was funny or she planned this shit all along which was proven right after i got this text message from her after i blacked out and woke up in jail pause to read there's a lot of curse words so the rest will be on my instagram story this is the time I fought my mom because her boyfriend was touching me in my sleep and she defended him. I was 16 when this happened. I'm 20 years old now. He was touching me. She knew about it and she didn't do anything. Yes, they're still together till this day. And no, I do not talk to either of them. Let's get into it. So my mom had just recently divorced my dad and so she got a new boyfriend. His name was Daryl. Now let me tell you, I was not rocking with Daryl from jump because he was always a little too touchy. If I sat down next to him, he'd squeeze my knee, he would sneak up behind me and rub my shoulder. And when he would hug me, his hands would go a little too far down my back. Whenever he would come over, I'd just stay in my room. But one night, it was like damn near midnight. Mind you, I'm asleep because I don't play about my sleep. I wake up suddenly because I had a feeling somebody was in my room. So I turn on my lamp that's on the side of my bed. When I turn around, I see Daryl in my room with his back turned towards me, trying to sneak out of my room. But not only was he trying to sneak out of my room, he had my panties in his hands. So I look under my covers and sure enough, my panties are gone. Part two gets even worse. This is part two of when I fought my mom because her boyfriend was touching me in my sleep and she defended him. So I suddenly woke up in the middle of the night to see him trying to sneak out of my room with my panties in his hands. Instant tears started flooding my eyes because I knew what he had done. And I knew that if I told anyone, no one would believe me. Because like I said, I didn't like him from jump because he was always too touchy. And I told my mom how I felt that way and she told me that I need to start wearing less revealing clothes. But back to what I was saying. Once that motherfucking low life ass piece of shit notices that I woke up, he runs out of the room and then I hear him leave through the front door. So I quickly get dressed so I could go tell my mom what happened because I didn't know what else to do. I wake her up and go, Ma, Daryl just touched me in my sleep. He says, girl, stop making up these low fantasies in your head and go back to sleep. And so I told her, no, I woke up in the middle of him trying to leave my room with my panties in his hands. And once he noticed that I saw him, he left through the front door. Then she gets mad at me and starts yelling at me and says, and I quote, I don't need you running men out my house. That's crazy because my dad was her fifth husband. Daryl was about to be her sixth. If anybody was running men out this house, it was her. I'm tired of her BS at this point. She's yelling all up in my face. And so I shove her. This is where it gets crazy. Part three of the time I fought my mom because her boyfriend touched me in my sleep and she defended him. So I woke up my mom to tell her that her boyfriend had just touched me in my sleep. And she gets mad at me and starts yelling and screaming at me. But the amount of shit that she put me through, she had no right. So I'm sick of her BS at this point, and so I shove her. I had never put my hands on my mama before this. My mama deserved to get her ass whooped. With how toxic she was, if she wasn't my mama, if she was just some other regular bitch, I probably would've already threw hands with her like 10 times. So now we're on the floor of her bedroom, scrapping it out. I know I did not show her no mercy. Obviously, I went and whooped her ass because 16 years of being mistreated? Come on, at this point, I had a heart of steel and hands of steel. So she's screaming and she's yelling and she's talking about, I'm gonna call the police on you. I was like, call them. After I tell them what happened, they're gonna be on the look for your boyfriend. She tells me to get my stuff and get out i said say less so i start packing i texted a close friend who i had already told about daryl being a creep and they came to get me I lived with that friend for two years until i turned 18 and moved into my own place i have an amazing boyfriend who understands my trauma and takes everything slow with me i no longer have contact with daryl or my mom and now i only see them through social media posts 
where he talked about how my boyfriend got away with touching his own little sister. So I started dating this guy in like 2018. He lives like 45 minutes away from me, but he couldn't drive because he had a DUI. So his license was suspended. Well, I had a car, but I was in college, so I didn't have time to drive up to where he was at every single day. So we would only hang out on the weekends until he got his license back. Mind you, this man was a bum. He had no job. He wasn't even in school. I liked him despite all of that because I thought he was a genuine sweet guy. He still lived with his parents, but he was only 23, so I decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. But anyways, one day he came to pick me up and we went to his house. He told me that he had a little sister, but this would be my first time actually meeting her in person. She was only 8 years old and he was 23. He was super cute and sweet, so the more we hung out, the more I got close with her. Well, one day me, my boyfriend, and his little sister are all in his room watching TV. He goes to the bathroom and me and her start talking. I ask her what she likes to do for fun. She tells me she likes playing the game dress up. So I ask her how to play. She tells me that you have to strip completely naked. The person that you're Part playing with how my boyfriend dresses got away you up. With touching and she plays the game sister. with her older my brother. My boyfriend's in the bathroom and his little her. sister tells me that she plays this game called dress up that he taught her. You strip butt ass naked. You let the person you're playing with dress you up. Well, obviously my mind went south. I didn't know if I should have told her in that moment if it was wrong and not normal. Because I didn't want her to freak out before I got the chance to help her. So I ask her, how many times have you played this game with your older brother? She tells me that she plays it all the time and that she really likes it. So now I'm thinking he has completely groomed her. She thinks this game is completely okay. My boyfriend comes back in the room and we finish the night off watching a bunch of movies. I didn't know what else to do. So I leave his house and then the next day I call him and I ask him about this little game. The first thing he does is get mad. And says that she's young and dumb and doesn't know what she's talking about. And it's wrong of me to just falsely accuse him of things like this. So he breaks up with me. I didn't really care care but i was thinking about his little sister that i needed to get back into that house so i could ask her more questions so i begged for him back even though i didn't really like him i told him that i believed him that i wanted to come over so we could work things out this is what happened when i went to his house Part 3 of how my boyfriend got away with touching his own little sister. So he breaks up with me after I tell him what his sister told me about this game that they play where you strip completely naked. Yeah, that game. Me not having enough proof to take it to the authorities just yet, I beg for him back so I can go over to his house again get more info from his little sister. For some odd reason, when I went over to his house, his little sister just wasn't anywhere to be seen. Me and him are sitting in his room watching a movie and he goes to the bathroom. I see his little sister peek her head through the door. I'm like, hey, come here. She seems super excited to see me and she tells me, Mom and Dad told me I couldn't talk to you anymore. So I ask her why, and she says that they told him that I was a bad person and I make up lies about people. People, including her older brother. So I ask her what lies I made up. She says they didn't tell her. So now I'm thinking, oh, so the parents are in on it too. So I continue to ask her questions about this game that they play. I'm like, have you told your parents? She says, yes, she's told her parents. That they didn't see anything wrong with it. That's just another reason for her to think that it's okay. So that's why shit goes south and her parents walk in. Part 4 of how my boyfriend got away with touching his own little sister. So my boyfriend's little sister tells me that their parents know about this game that she plays with her older brother, but they strip completely naked. So as she's telling me more and more, her parents walk in. It was the first time I disrespected somebody in their own home. They start yelling at her for not staying put where they told her to stay put. That way, I couldn't talk to her. That's when I snap and I start going off on her parents. And how I know that their son is touching their little daughter and they're not doing anything about it. And that I'm not afraid to report them. And her parents go ballistic. It's also when my boyfriend gets out of the bathroom. My mom comes up to me and tries to smack me. Dodged it. Then she's yelling and screaming at me to get out of her house. It's kind of a hard situation because I knew that if I called the police, I would have no proof of anything. I would necessarily be trespassing since they told me to get out. That little girl can't speak for herself. They groomed her. She thinks it's okay. I wasn't gonna leave that little girl in that house. So I stood my ground. That's when my boyfriend grabs me. The dad grabs me. They pick me up. I can't even make this up when I say that they threw me out their front door. Part 5 of how my boyfriend got away with touching his own little sister. So after I confront the parents about it, my boyfriend and his dad both pick me up and they chuck me out their front door. They go back inside and then my boyfriend comes out again and throws my purse at me. My heart was torn to shreds because I knew that there was nothing that I could do. I didn't have enough proof of anything and I knew that I could not get back into that house ever again. Now I can't talk to that little girl. But I went ahead and reported them to Children's Services anyways. They said the most they could do was a well-being check. Obviously, they didn't see anything wrong in the well-being check because nobody in that household was going to admit what really happened. And I also know it went well because after they threw me out of their house, my boyfriend had blocked me completely on all social medias, but I still did have his friends on social media. And I saw one of his friends post a Snapchat at his house with him and his little sister in the background, which means that little girl never got taken out of that house. I also made sure to tell all of his friends, but everybody just thought that I was lying and trying to falsely accuse him. So there was nothing that I could do. Ladies, this is why you should always be cautious while driving alone at nighttime. If you ever find yourself in a situation where a car is following you or making every single turn that you make, do not 
and I repeat, do not drive home. And this is why. So I started talking to this one guy through this online dating app. Yes, I know the dangers, baby. I was desperate. I was taking my chances regardless. He decided to go on a date and that would be the first time that I would ever see him in person. Never FaceTime before this and he looked exactly how he did in his picture. The way I was ready to... <laughs> his myself. Point is, he looked scrumptious. Scrumptious, scrumptious. Anyways, y'all get it, y'all get the point. Well, I was already at the restaurant we were supposed to meet up at and I was waiting for him. We had a really good time, but it was time for me to go to bed because I was getting tired. Mind you, I didn't see his car when he pulled up. He just walked in. But anyways, I start to drive home. Well, 15 minutes into the drive, I kind of noticed that there's a car behind me that has taken every single turn that I have taken since I left the restaurant. So I start taking random turns to see if the car would still follow me and it did. Well, eventually I stopped to park in a random driveway. At first, that same car passes by me, but then it turns right back around parks behind my car. Part two of why ladies should always be cautious while driving alone at nighttime. And if a random car starts following you to never drive home. So like I said, I noticed this random car following me so I didn't drive home. I parked into some random driveway and the same car that was following me drove right past me. I wait a little bit to see if I was in the clear and I see that same car driving right back towards my direction. That's when I duck. I basically try to make it seem like I went inside, even though it's not really my house. Well, he ends up parking right behind my car and he gets out of his car. At this point, I was terrified, but at least I was in my car so I could run him over if need be. And thankfully, I have tinted windows, so when he walked past my car, he didn't see me because I was ducking. I didn't really get to see his face or what he was wearing. He basically looked like a black figure. Like I said, it was really dark outside. Whoever's house I was didn't keep their front porch lights on. Thankfully, then maybe he would have seen me. Well, he gets to the front porch. That's when I immediately get up, turn my car back on, and drive home. Well, the next morning, I was woken up by someone ringing my doorbell. Look outside, and I see the same car from last night parked in my driveway. Part three of why ladies should always be cautious while driving alone at nighttime. Like I said, I was able to get away from whoever was following my car last night. Well, the next morning, someone was ringing my doorbell, so I woke up. I look outside my window because my bedroom window is right at the front of my house. And I see the same car that was following me last night parked in my driveway. I didn't know what to do at this point, but I thought that I should at least try to see what he looks like. So I go to my door and I look through that little peephole. And I say I almost passed away. It is not an exaggeration. It was my date from last night. I swing open my door and I'm like, oh, motherfucker, how did you find me? I didn't give you my address. Up, I straight up confront him. I'm not playing around. I said, were you following me last night? He goes, oh, I just forgot to get your number. At the moment, I was thinking he could be telling the truth because we did only talk through that online dating app. We never exchanged numbers. So I went ahead and gave him my number and didn't think much of it. That was a big mistake. Because the next day, I woke up to 200 missed calls and 50 texts from him. For part four. Part four of why ladies should be cautious while driving home alone at nighttime. So my date shows up to my house, aka the dude that was following me last night, and says that he was following me because he never got to get my number. Loki believed him because we never did exchange numbers. I kinda thought it was a little cute. He would follow me just to get my number. At the time I wasn't really thinking that he could have just like texted me on the dating app for my number. But yeah, I should have never gave him my number. So when I woke up the next day, I had 200 missed calls and 50 texts from him. So I start reading the texts and it was not an emergency. It was actually a nightmare. Text read something along the lines of, text me back right now, where the hell are you? I need you. Call me back or I swear to God. Well, I didn't even bother replying. But as the day went on, he kept texting me and he kept calling me. The texts turned into threats. I was thinking about just blocking him. But then I remembered since he followed me and I drove home, he knew my address. Part five of why ladies should always be cautious while driving alone at night. Like I said, I gave my date my phone number. Then the next morning, I woke up to a bunch of spam texts and calls from him. Basically just saying things like, call me back right now. I need you. Text me back. And then his text started getting worse. He started saying things like, if you don't text me back, I'm going to kill you. I was thinking about blocking him, but I didn't want to make him mad because he knew where I lived. I show his messages and all his calls to my girlfriend. They just tell me to go to the police. One of my really good friends came over and took me to the police station because she didn't want me leaving my house by myself. Well, when we got there, they told us that they couldn't even do anything because he hadn't committed a crime yet and that the threats that he sent me just weren't enough to make a case well i did end up blocking him i blocked his number and i blocked him on the online dating site basically moved in with my friend it's been like a week now and i haven't really went home my girlfriends and family are now helping me find a new place to stay if there's any advice that anyone wants to give me please leave it in the comments we ain't ever getting out this pandemic because of this Foolishness. I order food every single day. I am a hungry bitch. I use DoorDash and they have like this no contact delivery thing. And usually when the delivery person arrives, they call me to let me know that they have my food. 
always tell them to leave it at the front porch and I'll go get it. And so they leave it at the front porch and then they drive away. Well, yesterday when I ordered Chipotle, this dasher called me to let me know that he was here. I told him to leave it at the front and he just stood in my front porch for like five minutes. Once he realized I wasn't coming out, then he left. Weird vibes. Like I was scared to get the food even after he left because I thought he was going to jump out the bushes. So this is what I got. I got a burrito and in Chipotle, you have the option to like double wrap your burrito with the tortilla. I didn't get that, but if I did, it would have showed up on here. Usually when I get my food, I just bite into it. But this time I decided to check it because this guy was giving me such bad vibes. He had the audacity to double wrap it with the tortilla to hide the fact that he took a huge chunk. Story time how a white girl ripped my wig off in school. This happened in freshman year or sophomore year. I can't remember the exact year. It was only like a year or two ago. I'm now graduated, but I'm supposed to be a junior. I just graduated early because I'm smart or whatever. But let's get into the story. So this year of high school, I had gym class first period. Can we just talk about how that should be a crime? We didn't have enough time to shower. I don't think we were allowed to. We'd have to go to our next period all sweaty, stinky, just nasty. So in that gym class, there were two of my close friends. I had to play basketball or something, so we were all on the same team. One of the close friends that I had in that class were getting really upset with me and my other friend because we weren't putting in any effort. I was just the type of person that would always have my makeup and hair done. And I was not about to show up to history class with my crush across the room smelling like 10 cans of bounce that ass. So yeah, she basically got upset with me and my other friend, but we didn't think it was that serious. Next thing you know, rumors were going around that she was talking about me and that I was talking about her. Then the next day, I'm over there in gym class running on the treadmill, barely, just doing a little jog. And here comes Miss Wig Snatcher and she starts going off on me. Like for a part two. Part two of how a white girl ripped my wig off in school. So the next day in gym class, she comes up to me and starts going off on me. I had just gotten off the treadmill. I had no energy to argue with this girl. So I just stood there and I stared at her and I continued to ask her, are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? She wasn't done, child. She wasn't done. So I proceeded to pull out my phone. I start to record her to show my parents exactly how I get treated in that school for no reason. She had the audacity, the nerve. She charges at me and tries to smack the phone out of my hand. I still have this video in my phone, but I'm not going to post it just for privacy reasons. She misses my phone because I dodged that shit. But she did hit me on my arm. I said, this is an issue. I know this Caucasian female did not put her hands on me. Like I said, I had just gotten off the treadmill. I was way too tired. I was way too tired to beat the brakes off this bit. So I was like, you know what? Violence isn't the answer. Let me go to administration. As some of you know, the administration at the school that I went to was trash. They did absolutely nothing. Therefore, I took matters into my own hands. I was going to get her the next day. Part three. Part three of the white girl ripping my wig off in school. So I go home and start plotting. I go straight to my mom and I say, Mom. I got disrespected. She said, oh, what happened? So I go ahead and show her the video and give her context. She looked at me and she said, if you get into a fight tomorrow, you get your wig snatched. Do not come to me crying. I said, say less. I got this shit in the back. Something in my spirit was telling me all I need is bobby pins. Just to clarify, I had just started wearing wigs. I did not know how it was supposed to go. I did not know what I was doing. I thought some bobby pins and some change was gonna do it. So this girl was like twice my size and I was thinking, what reason would she have to pull my hair? Like she already has the advantage. And all my friends was telling me, Bennett, don't fight her. Like she's bigger than you. I said, fuck all that. I'm getting my boot boot in regardless. I show up to school next day already. I'm ready. Like, I had my girlfriends bring me extra bobby pins. And that shit was secure. Nobody ripping this off. I said, ain't no talking. I'm just gonna swing. Period. That's exactly what I did. She came up to me. She said, so I heard. I said, bop. She yanked my shit. So I said, bop, bop again. I get my little boop boops in, realizing that my wig is not secure. Eventually, it comes off and people are like, ah, she got her wig ripped off. I said, but I promise you, she won't touch me again. And she didn't. Period. This is why you should never let social media fame control your life. This is the story of the boy who lured his neighbor to his death for TikTok clout. 19 year old Zach Latham would harass his neighbors for two years until they finally had enough. Lots of events led up to this incident, many involving Zach's reckless driving. Zach was emancipated at 17, joined the National Guard, and then moved in with his grandparents. And immediately he started having conflicts with his neighbors. His neighbors were the Durhams and they were upset with how reckless Zach would drive past their house. Zach would purposely taunt his neighbors to get reactions out of them and record it in hopes that he could post it and gain some TikTok cloud. Pretty sure his account got banned, so I'll be posting his videos on my Instagram story so my video doesn't get taken down. One day, Zach posted a video on TikTok of an argument he had with the neighbor's wife, calling her a Karen, and the video got 3 million views. The comments on the video were encouraging Zach to continue to mess with his neighbor. And in a desperate attempt for fame, that's exactly what he did. But he continued with his reckless driving. A former National Guard continues to terrorize the safety of his community for views. Yet when he called the police, he painted himself as the victim. Police didn't interfere, so the situation turned deadly. You won't believe what happens next. Part two of why you should never let social media fame control your life. The story of the boy who lured his neighbor to his death for TikTok clout. So Zach continues to terrorize his neighbors. Since the video of him calling his neighbor a Karen went viral, he thought it was his time to shine. Mind you, the neighbors reported him to the police several times. They said that there was nothing that they could do because coronavirus caused all the courts to be closed. Zach had even tried to run over the neighbor's son with his car. This kid was crazy, like actually insane. He already had a criminal record. After Zach tries to run over the neighbor's son, Mr. Durham, the dad, drives onto the road to block Zach's car. 
car. I mean, at this point, Mr. Durham was probably thinking, okay, the police won't do anything. It's been two years and this kid is still messing with us. Time to take matters into my own hands. And that decision resulted in brutal death. So then Zach speeds back to his house and runs inside. On his front porch, his girlfriend is already standing there. She's recording this whole thing. And why is she standing there and recording? Because her and Zach planned this whole thing. They could record it and put it on TikTok. Neighbor's whole family follows Zach back onto his property. Zach comes out of his house with a stun gun and several knives. Part 3 of why you should never let social media fame control your life. Story of a boy who lured his neighbor to his death for TikTok clout. So Zach comes out of his house with a stun gun and several knives. Mr. Durham tries to grab Zach. Zach slashes Mr. Durham's arm with his knife. Zach then runs away into his garage. Mr. Durham follows Zach into his garage. Zach then fires his stun gun at Mr. Durham several times. And then proceeded to attack him and stab him under the armpit which punctured his lung. And that resulted in Mr. Durham's death. The whole incident was caught on video because Zach's girlfriend was recording. She later on told the police that she recorded because she wanted it to go viral. And somehow, after brutally murdering a man, Zach calls the police and paints himself as the victim. This is part of the 911 call. What he says will shock you. I won. Where's your emergency? There's blood all over the place. I just got assaulted and jumped. Are you the one that got stabbed? No, I'm... No, that was the other victim, but I got beat up really bad and I had blood all over me. Okay, quick story time since I still have my makeup on. Let me tell you about this old lady that tried to fight me at Walmart. PSA to this old lady, if you're watching this, you could still get slapped any day. I don't like you and I'm willing to fight still. Waiting for you to try it the second time. Anyways, let's get into it. I was at Walmart with my sister because I go everywhere with my sister. We were just looking for hair accessories. Because you know at Walmart, sometimes they have those hidden gem items that you probably never thought would be there, but they're there and it's really cheap. So we go there to look for some cute hair accessories. I would just like to clarify that this old lady was white and I had a blonde wig on. Yeah, this old lady pulls up on us and she's like... Like, hmm, one thing about me is I hate when people stare at me. What are you staring at? Do you need help? Hey, if you want to suck a little pussy, just fight it. Anyways, you know what I mean? Like, it's just mad judgmental. I feel like people are judging me. So I'm like, can I help you? He goes, can I touch your hair? Obviously, I say no because who is this old white lady trying to touch me? Don't know you. Don't know where you've been. Like, stay away. Six feet. I don't know what it is about the people that live around me being so bold. I say no, you cannot touch my hair. And she reaches her old wrinkly hands. Next thing you know, she's tugging on my hair. It's part two right now. The time an old lady tried to fight me at Walmart, part two. So I thought that she was just gonna feel my hair. No, she takes her hand and starts tugging. And I'm like, what the fuck is this bitch doing? She's tugging on my hair. I'm like, can you like not fucking touch me? So like I move my head so then she can like let go. And she goes, fake. My sister steps in and she's like, you're not about to touch my sister like that. And you're not about to come up to us as an old white lady and pull our hair so you can see if it's fake or not. And she's like, that's the problem these days. You black people don't know how to love yourself. This lady was looking for a fight. I was ready to fight. Something about me and my sister, we do not let nobody disrespect us. Your old, black, white, short, four-year-old, we will get on your ass. So we like, hold on, you're not about to walk up to us and disrespect us, our space and our bubble and our privacy. You're not about to come up to us and try to pick an argument with us. Old as she is, I'm surprised she didn't have a heart attack. There was a worker really close by, so they came and was like, okay, what's going on? I was like, before I put this old white lady in her grave, her have an early funeral, you better get her. As she was walking away, she was saying all types of racial slurs. Me and my sister did not give one fuck and went about our day, period. The time my crazy neighbor tried to go on a killing spree in our neighborhood. This was no average killing spree. Dude had a whole rifle. He was going into people's backyard, jumping fences, literally trying to break into people's homes. Just get ready for the story time. So I don't exactly remember when this happened. It happened a few years ago when I was still in high school because I just graduated this year and I know that another one of my friends that went to that school and lives in the same neighborhood saw him in their backyard. So this guy was literally our next door neighbor. I've lived in the same neighborhood since fourth grade and he was here when we moved here. Him and my dad honestly had a really good bond. If one of them needed a lawn mower, they would let them borrow it. And I was even in band at one point and I was selling butter braids because they do it for a fundraiser. And he bought several of my butter braids. I got hella chain. I genuinely thought this man was kind hearted until this night. I was chilling in my room and all of a sudden I see a light flashing through my window. Obviously I go to check it out and it's police. Several police. One of them waves their hand like this, trying to get me to close the blind. So I do and go tell my family what I just saw. And we hear a knock on the door. Thinking it's police, we go to open the door. And it's our crazy neighbor with a rifle. Part two of the time my crazy neighbor tried to go on a killing spree in our neighborhood. Like I said, we thought it was going to be police at the door. We have a doorbell and whenever someone doesn't use our doorbell, it's usually police. And the fact that I just saw the police outside, I thought it was going to be them. But no child, it was our crazy neighbor with a rifle. Mind you, at this point in time, I did not see the rifle. I 
was scared. <laughs> my stomach was in my ass type B. I was hiding behind my sister. Like, uh-uh, y'all keep all that. I didn't see his rifle, but I did get to glance at him, though. He looked intoxicated. I don't think he was, and I'll explain that later. Yeah, as soon as my dad opens the door and our neighbor sees us, he says something along the lines of, I'm not trying to hurt anyone. Dad immediately shuts the door in his face. Dad turns around to the rest of us and tells us that he saw a rifle at his feet. At this point, I'm thinking, child, I know this man did not just knock on our door, to hide a gun, then we could open the door and he could shoot us, right? Oh, hell no, it's time to evacuate. I should call the police instead. But while one of my family members was on the phone with the dispatcher, he heard another knock on the door. This time it followed up with them announcing that they were the police. The police officer was shaking. This time my crazy neighbor tried to go on a killing spree because our crazy neighbor was in our backyard trying to evacuate. Because our crazy neighbor is now in our backyard trying to break into our house. So this means that he was still on our property after we closed the door on him. Literally went to our backyard after we slammed the door in his face and was trying to figure out a way to get in through the back. Who the fuck do you expect to let you in their house if you have a rifle? Understand that he was trying to hide it, but he was not doing a very good job. Okay, so we frantically start packing. We hear yelling outside, we hear dogs barking. The police basically had him cornered in our backyard. So we had to get out of there as quickly and safely as possible. So we have police surrounding our house. We all finish packing and go inside our garage so we can get out from there because it's safer. There were literal police cars following us all the way to the hotel. Once we got into the hotel, they told us that they were going to call us when we were good to go back home. We only stayed at that hotel for one night. And once they call us the next morning to tell us that we we're good to go back home, my dad asks them, exactly what happened apparently that night there was two boys across the street playing basketball it was really late at night and he was extremely tired and he had work the next day he kindly came out and asked the boys to be quiet they kept being loud and it only went downhill from there Part four, the time my crazy neighbor tried to go on a killing spree in our neighborhood. But yeah, based off what the police told us was he kept having to come outside to tell the boys to be quiet. He had to work early the next day, so he was getting really frustrated. Boys were being really rude about it and just laughing at him and just like poking fun at him and making fun of him and stuff. So he got really, really angry and he went back into his house, grabbed his rifle, came back out, and threatened the boys. The rifle in his hand. Obviously, the boys run back inside and call the police. He didn't shoot at them. He had a gun in his hand. He was cornered. He didn't shoot at anyone. Like I said in a previous video, it seemed like he was intoxicated, but I don't think that he was. I genuinely think that he had major mental issues and something just really, really triggered him that night. Either it was the boys or the stress just got built up too much. I genuinely think that he did not want to hurt anyone. I don't know exactly what happened that night. He had a rifle. Like, if he wanted to hurt somebody, he could hurt somebody. But he didn't. I'm guessing the rifle was genuinely just for intimidation. Wow. Oh, no don't take my word on it after we came back to our house that man was gone we haven't talked to him or heard about him since story time about my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend and how she tried to kill me so i've had problems with my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend multiple times before I first met her when she dm'd me going off on me because i was dating her ex well she apologized and we became really good friends we actually got really close we got so close to the point where she actually moved in with me i even introduced her to my other friends and we all became really close one day my dad comes over to my apartment and after he left she was being really weird she wouldn't talk to me she was ignoring me she was being really short with me and over the next week or so i noticed my other friends becoming really distant well one of my friends decided to finally talk to me she told me that my boyfriend's ex-girlfriend told all of them that when my dad came over he had grabbed her butt and she told me about it i didn't do anything which was a fat lie and that's not even the half of it she lied to everyone about having cancer so she could get money she tried to start a fight with me because she claimed i stole her stuff she blocked me after that well one day one of my really close friends that she was also friends with sent me a post she made on her instagram she posted a dead dog and captioned it my heart is torn i accidentally ran over my dog it was my dog like for part two Part 2 about my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend and how she tried to kill me. So like I said, my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend posted a dead dog on her Instagram. Captioned it saying she was so sad she accidentally ran over her dog. Well, it was my dog. At this time, I'm not home, so I immediately go home. Like I said, she lived with me and I could tell that that picture was taken in the front of my apartment. But when I pull up, I see her looking out our window. When she sees me, she runs away from the window. I'm livid at this point, this bitch killed my dog. So I run to get into my apartment and she meets me at the door. She tells me that there's a fire in our apartment to leave all my belongings outside. So I drop my phone, purse, keys, and we run up to the apartment. She shows me the fire, says she's gonna go get help, and runs out of the apartment. And closes the door behind her. Get a bucket and fill it up with water and put some of the fire out. While I think my boyfriend's ex is going to go get help. Well, the fire started growing faster and I needed to ditch and get out of the apartment. When I tried to get out, I noticed that the lock on the door was changed. The part where you put in your key to get into your apartment was on the inside facing me. I didn't have my keys because she told me to leave them outside. Like for part three. Part three of my boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend and how she tried to kill me. My boyfriend's crazy ex-girlfriend locks me inside my apartment while there's a fire and I couldn't get out because she changed the lock on the door. So I knew my only choice was to put out the fire unless I wanted to jump out the window. Well, the smoke is getting really thick at this point. The fire had not gotten out of hand yet, so there was still a chance that I could put it out and save my stuff and my life. 
I know I should have jumped out the window, but I wanted to save my stuff too. So I open up my window and start filling up that same bucket of water over and over again. And I keep pouring it on the fire, damn near about to pass out because of the smoke. The fire eventually does go out. And then I jump out the window because that's the only way for me to get out. But as I'm walking away from the apartment, my friend's ex is standing there and she gives me this look. She was annoyed that I was alive. When the firefighters and the police arrive, the police start questioning everyone, and when they question me, I tell them that she tried to kill me and also put everybody else in the apartment's life in danger too. But after they took her down to the station to question her, she confessed to everything, including killing my dog. Now she's serving time in jail for attempted murder of me and my neighbors. Every time of why I'll never ride in a subway ever again. I was on my way home after spending the weekend with my friend. I sit on this bench waiting for my train. This bench was right in front of this wall. It was placed on the edge of the wall where you would like turn the corner. And on that wall behind me, there was a ledge. I had all my bags and I had my water bottle and I put it on that ledge. At the subway station, there was only like three people. Mind you, it was like nighttime. I noticed this creepy old man with a cane. Something in me was telling me to just Uber home. But I just stayed at the subway station because really nothing was going on for me to feel like that. If that makes sense. So I just ignored that feeling and waited for my train. I turned around to get my water bottle so I could get a sip of it. I noticed this man standing right on the corner of the wall and he was not there before so I was kind of creeped out. He just smiles and waves at me so I smile and wave back. I get my water bottle and I take a sip from it. Well the train finally arrives and I start to get my bags together so I can get on the train. By the time I got everything together it seemed like everybody else had already gotten the train except for the old man with the cane. Well, as I was about to get on the train he stopped me. He said not to get on the train because the man that appeared behind me had switched out my water bottle when I wasn't looking. It's a good thing I didn't get on the train. Or was it? Like for part two because this is where things start to get really weird. Part two of why I'll never ride the subway ever again. Like I said, the old man stopped me because he said the man that appeared behind me had switched out my water bottle when I wasn't looking and I had already taken a sip from it, so good thing I didn't get on the train. So now me and that old man were the only ones in the station. I thank him and then I start to get tingles all over my body. Like I'm getting really sleepy. So I start to leave the subway to catch an Uber instead. My body keeps getting more and more tired. Next thing you know, I black out. When I woke up, I was back on the bench and the old man with the cane was sitting right next to me looking at me. I start to panic and he says everything is okay and that when he started to leave the station behind me, he noticed that I was passed out so he picked me up and took all of my stuff and put me back on the bench. And he stayed with me to make sure that I was safe, not just passed out in the subway station by myself. So I'm thinking, wow, this old man is literally amazing. I think him and start grabbing my stuff so I can leave. But as I'm leaving, I get a really weird feeling. I decided to glance behind me one more time and there I see the man who supposedly switched out my water bottle turn the corner and start talking and laughing with the old man with the cane. Part three, part three of why I'll never ride the subway ever again. So like I said, I see that same man who supposedly switched out my water bottle and put something in my drink that made me pass out in the corner and start talking to the old man with the cane who had told me that that same guy switched out my water bottle. My blood runs cold and I run. I run out of their sight as fast as possible. When I get out of the station, I run for blocks just in case they try to follow me. Once I get far enough, I hide behind a building and I order myself an Uber. I'm hiding behind a building because I'm super paranoid in case they're like in a car that drives by so like they don't see me. I wait for the Uber to arrive and I get in and I get home safely. My parents were expecting me to be home that night so as you can imagine they were super worried as to why I got home so late. I had just told them that I forgot something at my friend's house so I had to turn around and go back and that my phone had died so I wasn't able to contact them. I didn't want to worry them so I didn't tell them anything about the two men. Until I went upstairs to change. I took off my jacket. I noticed that the blouse that I had under it was unbuttoned. My bra was gone and when I take off my pants I see blood. That's when I run and tell my parents like for a part four. Part four of why I'll never ride the subway ever again. So like I said, after that really weird encounter with those two men at the subway station, I get home safely and I start to undress. But when I take off my jacket, I noticed that the blouse that I was wearing under it was unbuttoned. My bra was gone. And when I took off my pants, there was blood. If you know what I mean. That's when I start crying and I run to tell my parents exactly what happened. I told them that I didn't tell them before because I didn't want to scare them. We were really understanding and the next day we went to the hospital. Well, once I got checked, they said they found wooden splinters inside of me. I must have not even felt that because of all the adrenaline that I had running through my body. And then I start to think, but why would there be wood? And then I remember that that old man's cane was wooden. After we left the hospital, my parents and I filed a police report. They opened an investigation and asked me to describe what the men looked like. They said they would check out the cameras at the subway station. But when they got there, they were told that that subway station didn't have cameras. And so they decided to take DNA samples from my clothing that I wore that night. And a match actually came back. Like for part five. Part five of why I'll never ride the subway station ever again. But once they took DNA samples from my clothing from that night, I was at the subway station. They found a match and yup, it was that old man with the cane. But there was only one DNA match and it was just that old man with the cane. I was able to tell them like, yeah, that was that same guy with the wooden cane. Well, it turns out the old man with the cane was already in the system. He had gotten arrested before. He had attempted to murder and sexually assaulted his own niece. 
had got let off on parole. There was so much evidence against him and also the fact that he tried something similar on his niece. They arrested him again. I also forgot to mention they took samples of his wooden cane, like the splinters that were found inside me. They matched it up to be like the same kind of wood. Anyway, so we go through the court proceedings and stuff and now he's locked up for like 20 years I'm pretty sure. I never rode in that subway station ever again and I don't plan on riding in any subway station ever again. And that other man that helped the old man with the cane is still somewhere out there because there wasn't enough evidence against him. This story tells how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. By the way, we're calling her Jamie. So growing up, me and Jamie never got along. She always talked bad about my mom and how my mom broke her family apart. She always had a problem with me, but I'd ignore her. Jamie was very insecure too. She always compared how he looked and would always say I was spoiled. And she only said that because last Christmas I received way more presents than her, but that was because my dad got me those presents. One day we got in an argument over cheese curls. She was upset because I took the last of it and she pushed me and knocked all the cheese curls on the floor. My mom came in the kitchen asking what happened. I told her what Jamie did. So my mom gripped her up by the neck and told her to go into her room and think about what she has done to me. Jamie stayed in her room all day she never came back out to apologize night come and I went into my room to go to sleep as I was sleeping I felt something touching my head when I got up I saw all my hair on my pillow and Jamie with scissors if y'all want to know what I did after that let me know down below in the comments this is part two of how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep so after I woke up out of my sleep, I saw all my hair on my pillow and Jamie with scissors. I've never screamed so loud in my life. I tried to get back at Jamie, but she had scissors in her hand and threatened to cut me if I didn't back up. It was like she wanted to physically harm me. So I took the little karaoke machine and threw it at her, but it fell on her leg and she started crying. I was confused because the karaoke machine wasn't even that heavy. Jamie's dad walked into the room asking what happened and Jamie said that I threw the karaoke machine at her. And my stepdad yelled at me asking, why would you do that? And then asked me what happened to my hair. I pointed at Jamie and said, Jamie cut all of my hair off. My stepdad looked at me like I was crazy and picked up Jamie and took her to the bathroom. I was mad because I knew Jamie was faking it. Then I went to my parents' room and told my mom that Jamie cut all of my hair off. If y'all want to know what happened after that, let me know down below in the comments. This is part three of how my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. So after I threw the karaoke machine at Jamie, she pretended to be hurt and my stepdad picked her up and took her into the bathroom. I quickly ran into my parents' room and I told my mom that Jamie cut all of my hair off. My mom got upset and asked my stepfather, did he not see my hair? He said, well, I threw the karaoke machine at Jamie. I yelled and told him that Jamie cut all of my hair off, which is the reason why I threw the karaoke machine at her, and she's faking it. My stepdad turned to Jamie and asked her, did she really do that? Jamie lied at first and said no. When me and my mom walked into the bathroom, she said yes, and that she only did it because my mom beat her. My mom was so confused. My stepdad said, you beat my child? After this, it get real messy, and I don't know if you guys want me to get into it, but let me know down below in the comments if you guys want to know what happened after that. This is part four from my jealous stepsister cut all of my hair off when I was asleep. I wasn't really expecting to make a part four because it gets messy after this, but since y'all asked for it, here I go. So after Jamie cut all of my hair off and lied and told her dad that the reason why she cut my hair off because my mom beat her, her dad got really upset and actually thought my mom hit her. So our parents got into a whole argument and my mom was upset because he wasn't believing her. And my mom knew it was her word against his daughter and that there was no convincing. So, my mom decided to leave. After 30 minutes of me and my mom packing up her things, Jamie went to her dad crying, saying that she lied and that my mom didn't beat her and that she apologized for cutting my hair. Her dad was really upset and made her apologize to me and my mom. Her dad, her dad apologized for not believing my mom, but it took my mom some time to come around. But at the end, everyone made peace and we were all good. Crazy thing is, after the whole situation was over, I was still bald. This story of time is about how my boyfriend exposed my nudes to everyone at school. By the way, we're calling him Keith. So I've built my boyfriend Keith for four months. He seemed pretty cool and chill and very outgoing. He played basketball and was very popular in school. So when he started talking to me, I felt very special. But as time went by, he wasn't the guy who I thought he was. He was pretty self-entitled, cocky, and it got annoying. He expected everything to be handed to him. Anyway, throughout the relationship, he'd always ask for nudes, but I always tell him no because I'm not that type of girl to send any guy 
guy nudes. He'd always get mad at me and say couples are supposed to do that type of stuff, but I didn't give in. I'd always take pictures of myself because I liked my body, but I would never send them to anyone. One day, Keith comes over to my house. We chill for a little bit, and then my mom had called me. And then when I had came back, I saw him on my phone. When I snatched my phone from him, he sent the pictures that I took of myself and sent them to his phone. It get really reckless after this. This is part two of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone in school. So after Keith snuck into my phone and sent my news to himself, I got mad at him and told him to delete them. He tries to justify why he should keep them, but I say no because they were private. So then he shows me he's deleting them. After that, I kicked them out of my house for invading my privacy. Next day, I get ready for school. I text my boyfriend good morning as usual, but he didn't respond, which I thought was weird. When I get to school, everyone is staring at me. One of the basketball players at my school came up to me and said, you're wild. I was like, what? When I get to class, one of the girls sitting in front of the class said, girl, you're bold. And I'm still confused. When I sat down at my seat and I opened up my phone, I went through Snapchat, watching everyone's stories, and I saw my nudes on one of Keith's friend's story. After this, it gets terrible. This is part three of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone at school. So after I saw that Keith sent my news to one of his friends, his friends exposed my news on Snapchat. I got upset. When lunchtime hit, I came into the lunchroom and everyone was staring at me. One of my best friends came up to me and asked me if I posted my news online. And I told her no and explained what Keith probably did. That lunchtime hit and we went around searching for him, but he wasn't there. I didn't know what to do, but my friends tried to convince me to go to the counselor, but I was embarrassed and I didn't want anyone to know about them or for them to tell my parents. I tried texting him, Keith, on why did he do that? Why did he send those people my pictures? But he just blocked me. I wasn't even sad about it no more. I just got upset. So I called my older brother about it and I told him what Keith did. And he said he'd be at my school at the end of the day and that he'll handle the whole situation. So school ends and everyone is leaving out. Me and my best friend walk out together to meet up with my brother. When I get outside, all I see is my brother and his friends jumping Keith. It gets crazy after this. Let me know if you guys want to part four. This is part four of how my boyfriend exposed my nudes to everyone in school. Like I said earlier, I was supposed to be meeting up with my brother after school, but I saw him and his friends jumping my boyfriend Keith. Everyone was crowded around him, and you can tell that Keith was getting it bad. His lip was busted, two black eyes, hands were bleeding, and his clothes were ripped up, and he had bruises on his legs and arms. And all his friends backed up, and the one who posted the nudes wasn't there. By the time I reached down to the crowd, the cops came, and I'm pretty sure it was probably because the school called. And I was trying to stop my brother and pull him off of Keith, but him and his friends just kept going at him. When the cops came storming in, they all hopped out of their cars. They screamed at everyone, telling everyone to back up. By the time they reached the center, they arrested my brother and his friends, and they had to get an ambulance for Keith. My brother tried to escape, but they tased him, and he fell to the ground. At this point, it gets really sad. To be honest, I don't even think y'all actually want to know what happened after that, but let me know down below. This is part five of how my boyfriend exposed my news to everyone in school. So after the fight broke up, the cops were called and they arrested my brother and his friends, but Keith had to get an ambulance. Afterwards, I went home and my friends came with me. At this point, I had to tell my parents. They were really disappointed, but they weren't hard on me. They ended up going to my school, talked to my counselors and all the teachers about it, which was very embarrassing for me. They brought in one of the students, who was Keith's friend, that actually posted the pictures. Some other stuff went down, but... We were able to press charges, ask my brother, my parents bailed him out. But Keith tried pressing charges against my brother, but since I was already pressing charges against him for exposing my pictures, he ended up having to drop the charges because it was too much going on. Some other stuff went down in between, but it's too much to explain. But at the end of it all, I won the case. Keith and his friends ended up having to leave the school, and of course I broke up with Keith, but my news will forever circle around the internet. Story time on how my dad forced me into getting an abortion. And to this day, we still don't speak. So I started dating my boyfriend, Jason, when I was 15. My parents never really mind me having a boyfriend until I got with Jason. He graduated high school, and my dad didn't like the fact that he wasn't planning on going to college. He said that he was wasting his life, but in all honesty, my dad was upset because he was poor, and he felt as though he could never take care of me. There were times when my dad tried to pay him to break up with me, but he'd never take the money. And for me, that was just so embarrassing. Right before my 16th birthday, I found out I got pregnant, 
and I was kind of happy about it, even though I was still in high school. I've seen plenty of girls making it work. I, of course, told my boyfriend and we told our family, but my dad wasn't happy about it. About a week later, he told me we were going to the doctors to go see how far along I was. When I get there, I found out I was in an abortion clinic. If you want to know what happened after that, let me know down below in the comments. This is part two of how my dad forced me into getting an abortion. So like I said before, my dad lied to me and told me we were going to the doctor to see how far along I was. And when I get there, turns out he sent me to an abortion clinic. I got upset asking what was he trying to do. He explains to me why I shouldn't have the baby. He tells me if I ever have the child, he would never support me and that he will kick me out of the house. And that sooner or later, me and Jason would break up, which he was sort of right about. I felt like at this moment I had no help and I told my dad I wanted to call Jason. So he gave me a quarter to make a call on the payphone and he didn't pick up. My dad explains to me that he's not reliable and that this will be the best decision for the both of us. I thought I didn't have a choice and he manipulated and gaslighted me into getting it, which I didn't know what he was doing at the time, but I got the abortion and right after I felt so numb. I couldn't even face Jason so my dad lied and told him that I had a miscarriage. It's been years since then, and I still have regrets knowing who my child could have been. Wait, 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 stop. Don't scroll. Send this to your friend before they watch it. Wait. Wait. I just wasted your time. Have a good day. Part 5 of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man, and I was 14. So like I said before, I made a plan for me and my daughter to run away while he went to work. When he left, I packed up food, clothes, and took money that we saved up just in case something happened. I woke my daughter up out of her sleep and I told her we need to go. I woke her son up and I told him we were going to the store and that we would be right back. He went right back to sleep and I gathered our things and took me and my daughter to the train station. She asked where we were going and I told her we were going to see our other family. When we got on the train, my daughter went to sleep and I cried because of all the pain I was put through with my husband. I left and I wasn't able to say goodbye to my mother, father, or any of my younger sisters. I didn't want any of them to know because I knew they were going to try to send me back. And leaving was the best decision that I made of my life. It's now been 23 years and I found my now husband and we're living a better life. And I bless God for allowing me to make Story time of the most dirtiest college roommate ever. By the way, we're calling her Jessie. So I moved in before Jessie and I get settled and decorate. The next day, she comes and throws her bag on the bed, then leaves. I thought it was weird because she didn't even say anything to me. Couple hours later, she comes back and I'm like, uh, hello. And she's like, my bed and comes give me a hug. She smelled very bad. She starts unpacking all of her clothes and blankets, but they smell like mildew. Anyways, a week later, there's this party going on for freshmen, and she goes, but I stay in because I had a migraine. I told her that when she comes back, can she keep the light off? Now it's 2 a.m., and she comes back in very loud, uses the bathroom, then goes to sleep. And now I'm up, so I got up to use the bathroom too. When I sit down on the toilet, I feel something very squishy. It was dark because, like I said, I had a migraine. I get up, turn the light on, and I was sitting in her shit. Here's another toxic best friend story time. When I was in middle school, my Instagram page started to grow, and it was only because I used to post a lot of dance videos. My toxic best friend at the time, which we're calling Emily, noticed my page was starting to grow, and she had my Instagram page on her phone, and same thing with her. I had her Instagram page on my phone, but I would never go through her page. When it came to my page, she would notice that I would get a lot of DMs from random guys, you know, sugar daddies, that type of thing, those men that would pay you for your services, if you know what I mean. And this one day, she actually responded back to one of them, and I had no clue until later that day. She was sending naked pictures back, not of me, but random stuff she found on the internet, and one of the dudes she was actually talking to wanted to meet up. And guys, she gave him my address. By the time I checked my phone, they had a whole plan to link up. There's more to the story, like for part two. Part two of my toxic best friend story time. So after I saw that she gave this strange man my address and set up to meet with him, I immediately wrote, hi, I'm a catfish and blocked him. I changed my password so she couldn't get into my Instagram account anymore. And guys, I was so upset that I ran to her house. And usually it takes me 10 minutes to walk to her house, but that day it only took me three. I banged so hard on her door, her mom answered and came out and said, Why are you banging on my door so hard? I said I apologize for banging so hard and that if I could ask to speak to Emily. She tells me she's at her grandma's house. 
which was only two blocks away. So I went to her grandma's house, and this time I knocked, she answered. I immediately yell, why the hell would you use my page to tell this man where I live? She tries to gaslight me, which at the time, I didn't know that's what it was. She was basically trying to tell me it wasn't a big deal and that she was going to split half the money with me. I laughed and dragged her down the stairs. There's more to the story, so sorry, guys. Like for Part three of my toxic best friend. So after I met up with Emily to confront her about giving this man my address, she tries to act as though it's not that serious. So after I dragged her down the stairs, and from there we started to get into it. I guess her grandma heard everything from inside because she came running outside to stop it. Once she breaks it up, she asks, why are you two fighting? And that, that's not what sisters are supposed to do. Emily says, I don't know, she just came here and started with me. Her grandma looks at me like, wow, I'm really disappointed in you. Especially because I thought you were one of the good ones around here. My face dropped because Emily never explained truly why I came up here and her grandma was just ready to take her side. I was going to stay quiet and not say nothing because I know her parents are really strict. But you know, I was done protecting her. So I told her grandma everything. Even things that had nothing to do with the situation. I was so upset. But after the whole situation was over, I didn't talk to her for almost a year. Then that next summer, I don't know. We Here's another toxic best friend story time. Okay, my best friend at the time, which we're calling Emily, had set me up in a fight. Okay, so summertime of 2015, there were new girls that moved into our neighborhood. They were sisters. One of the sisters was a little weird, but she was an innocent girl, which we're calling Daisy. My friend Emily, from the start of meeting her, did not like Daisy at all. And that's how Emily was. She never really liked people or any new friends to our friend group. One day, out of nowhere, she hangs out with Daisy. Which was kind of strange because she always told me she didn't like her. I ignored it. The next day, she hangs out with me and tells me that Daisy was talking crap about me. When Emily told me, I brushed it off. But then she told me if I didn't confront her, I'd look weak and a punk. So me, wanting to prove that I wasn't weak, I confronted Daisy. Guys, we fought and guess what? Daisy never talked crap about me. Emily manipulative self planned it all out and let me tell you exactly how she played. Part two of my toxic best friend story time. Okay, so this might sound all confusing, but try and keep up with me, okay? So after the whole fight had happened, part of me just felt dumb because I didn't know what actually happened. And I didn't know exactly what was said. So almost two weeks went by and I saw Daisy outside. And one day, I just went up and just straight up asked Daisy, what exactly did she say to me about Emily? She said the day her and Emily was hanging out, Emily was talking to her about our problems that we were having in our friendship. Daisy then said that Emily said to her, don't Ayana just annoy you? And she said she guessed so. But overall, Emily was just basically fishing for Daisy to say something bad about me. When in reality, Daisy wasn't paying me no mind. I then go to Emily and told her what Daisy had told me. She laughs and I'm just sitting here all confused. You're not going to even believe what she told me. She says, I was bored and the block was dry and that it was just a joke. At the time, I don't know why I let it slide, but now that I think of it, that's crazy how she was able to play with my emotions like a toy. And that's not a friend. Hello, everyone. This story time is from a follower of mine. She said she liked my story times and wanted to know if I could tell her story time. So here we go. We're calling her Kat because she wanted to stay anonymous. And by the way, she's 17. So last year, Kat was talking to this guy she met through Tinder, which we're calling Mike. Mike seemed like a pretty cool guy and they talked for two months. She followed his Instagram and saw pictures of a baby. She asked who's the child and he told her his little sister. So she didn't think nothing of it. They went out on dates and after six months of talking, they made their relationship official. She would post him, but he never post her. One day, she begged him to post her. And finally, he did, but he deleted it after one hour. Mike told her there were a lot of men liking and commenting on the picture, and he didn't want her to be a sexual object to them. She believed them, thought it was heroic, and just left the whole situation alone. But the next day, she received a message from a girl asking if she was talking to Mike. Kat said yes, and the girl responds that she's his child's mother. 
This is part two of Kat's story time. After she gets a DM of a girl claiming to be Mike's baby's mother, she immediately texts Mike and asks who she was. Mike responded that she's a family of a friend and that they don't talk no more. He went on about her being crazy for a good hour and why he stays away from her. Kat's still suspicious, so she DMs a girl asking for her number to talk more. Within the first five minutes of talking, she has a baby crying in the background. She asks who that was, and the girl FaceTime her. And remember how Kat saw pictures of a baby on Mike's Instagram page? Well, which he claimed to be his sister? That was the same baby crying in the background of the FaceTime. Cat Hart immediately drops because she wanted to believe what Mike was saying was true, but she had an instant that there was something that he wasn't telling her. Throughout the conversation, Mike's child's mother, she said they were still messing around, and it was around the same time her and Mike were still together. At the end, she broke up with Mike, and she left out with a broken heart. When I was younger, me and my friend Makai became friends with this new girl who lived in our neighborhood, and we're calling her Valentina. Valentina lived with her brothers, mom, and her dad, who wasn't around often. He came around maybe once a week. One day, we were all playing outside, you know, playing how regular kids should. Valentina's dad pulls up, sits in the car, and watching us as we're playing. When he finally gets out, he waves at Valentina, then calls over my friend Makaya and asks to speak with her. We're all confused, but then he told her that it was very important that she come and that everyone else has to stay here. Makaya and Valentina dad had walked into the alleyway and turned the corner. And me and Valentina listened and stayed where we're at, and we stopped playing. When Makaya finally comes back, we continue to play. When it was time to go back home, me and Makaya walked home together. I asked her, why did Valentina dad pull you aside? She proceeded to tell me, he told me not to say, but he asked to see my boobs. There's more to the story. Like for part two. So after we go back home and Makaya tells me Valentina's dad asked to see her boobs, I was so in shock. But she tells me she didn't show him because she felt weird doing it. By the way, I forgot to mention, at the time I was 10 and Makaya was 12. She already started developing, if you know what I mean. After she tells me everything that happened, we agreed upon telling her mom. When we got to her house, we told her mom and immediately she calls Makaya's dad. Guys, when I tell her dad came to the house, she was ready to kill this man. Her dad was like the hood type, and he brought all his boys. They went to Valentina's house asking to see her dad. Valentina's mom answers, and she tells Makaya's dad that he's not there, which was a lie. I'm guessing she could feel what was about to happen. He then went and told her what her dad had did, and her mom is so in disbelief, and she chooses not to believe him, saying he'd never do that. Makaya's dad was so frustrated and just walked away. As soon as she closes the door, we all hear Valentina's dad say, what's going on? And when I tell you this man ran up, he ran back and kicked the door open. As we hear Valentina's dad, Micaiah's dad kicks the door open and he ran inside and just attacked Valentina's dad. It was honestly the most scariest thing I've seen because you could see in his eyes that he was just ready to kill that man. And maybe after a minute, they finally pulled Makaya's dad off of Valentina's dad. And guys, her dad face was just covered in blood. Almost felt bad for him. But then I was like, eh, God's plan. Anyways, after the whole thing happened, Valentina's mom called the cops. And Makaya's dad was arrested for assault. But he wasn't in jail for long. Still to this day, he talks about how it was well worth it. And Valentina's father, he was just looked at as a sexual predator. And I never really thought about it until now, but I truly wonder how Valentina felt. Because after the whole situation, me and Micaiah never saw Valentina ever again. Not even on the streets. It was like she disappeared. Here's another toxic best friend story time. Growing up, me and Emily were close in our neighborhood. I was friends with everyone and she was just friends with me. Reason being because she said she didn't like people. And literally for no reason. But when I got into high school is when I started to drift away. I started making new friends I loved hanging out with. And I believe she started to notice because she'd always randomly say things. How come we don't hang out as much? And I just ignored her. And hanging around her, I was just always on my toes. And she gave me anxiety. Whenever she wanted to hang out, I noticed myself lying to her about what I was doing. Because if I was just relaxing at home, she'd be like, so you're not going to come see your best friend? That's fake. And she made me feel guilty about having my time or hanging around other people. One day, when I was in school, I posted something on my InstaSnap, and I looked at who watched it, and I saw a page that had my profile picture. And I clicked on the page, and the page had all types of pictures of me saying how much I hate myself, how much I wanted to kill myself, and me. 
So when I clicked on the page that had my profile picture, it had all types of crazy posts about how much I hated myself. There were also posts of my friends from school and mean things being said about them also. I immediately tried and get the page reported, but it was still up for a couple days. I showed my friends just in case they found the page and thought it was me. I also told my mom, but the page continued to be up. Maybe a week later, I forget about it and the post on the page start to dwindle down. After a couple weeks, I go hang out with my friend Emily because I haven't seen her in a while. I went to her house and we just took pictures and we used her phone because she had a newer phone. When I started taking pictures of her, a notification on Instagram pops up and I accidentally clicked on it. And remember how I talked about how someone made a fake page of me? She was the one logged into the account. I'm going to tell y'all straight to my why I quit working at McDonald's after two weeks. And so much happened in those two weeks. Like, it's crazy. I might have to do multiple parts. Hopefully, I don't get sued. And hopefully, you guys like this one. Okay, so the first day I worked there, they literally had me clean everything. And I'm talking about old oil stains on the corner of the floors to clean in the freaking walls and freezers. Which, I was in there for 30 minutes, not to mention. And that was not my job title. I was not a freaking janitor. I was a cashier. But come to find out, they only had me cleaning up all that mess because inspection was coming in the next day. And then the older employees proceeded to laugh. One newer employee said she never had to do that. By the way, she came a week before me. They only hired me to clean up all that stuff. I was irritated because no other employee had to do that but me. They wasted my time cleaning freezers and gook off the floor when they could have been training me on the freaking register. I did that for two days, but on the third day, there was a big fight. I gotta make it part two. So if you watched part one already, you already know what they had me doing, the wrong job title, purposely. And I did that for two days. On the third day, they finally started to train me on the register. But not really. I wasn't properly trained. That day, it was pretty hectic. I was slow and very confused on the register. And one of the managers asked me how many days I've been there. I said three. And she asked, why are you working so slow on the register? In my head, I thought that she was saying I was a slow worker, in which in reality, now that I think of it, I'm only slow because this is truly my first day because they had me doing other stuff the other first two days. Right before my lunch break, this lady with a knife walks into McDonald's, pointing it at me, asking for one of the managers, claiming she slept with my man. Me, I'm like shook. I don't know which manager she's talking about. I'm pretty new. So I backed up all confused and she come around towards me. Okay, so this is part three of why I stopped working at McDonald's after two weeks. So on my third day of working there, I told you guys about the lady that came with the knife pointing it at me, looking for the manager that slept with her man. When she came around the corner, the same lady that told me that I was working slow was the same lady she was looking for. Now, she had ran to the bag, was trying to hide behind the back door and people were some of the employees were trying to stop her but they wasn't trying to get too close because she had a weapon the lady is literally waiting on the manager and would not go anywhere till she came back so one of the employees called the police and they came to get the lady out when they finally got her out of the building some of the managers asked why didn't i stop her like sis what you want me to do i wasn't trying to get cut when i got home that same manager called later that day and said that my drawer was missing 42 dollars and my first paycheck was 23 dollars. i was working there for three days working eight hour shifts overtime and that's a whole nother story on why my paycheck is so low this story time is from a follower and she says she wants advice and would like to be called milan also please no one judge her so milan has been with her boyfriend damien for two months they started talking two weeks before making their relationship official she said it was pretty fast but the past week she hadn't been feeling damien and started to notice how toxic he was and she didn't know if she wanted to be with him anymore so she decided to call it quits before they got too deep so she told him she didn't want to be with him and that they jumped into the relationship too soon. And they split. Damien was upset and disrespected her in the process of the breakup and now they're not cool anymore. A couple days later, she started feeling weird. She'd get nauseous and dizzy. Come to find out she was pregnant and Damien was the child's father. She knew this because she took a pregnancy test. So right now she doesn't want to be with Damien and she said she wasn't ready for a child or to be a single mother. She said she wanted to get an abortion and was not going to tell Damien. Comment down below some advice. Okay, quick little story time, y'all. This just happened. I almost went to jail and my phone broke. So let me give y'all the bad story. My brother, he is 15 years old. So yesterday, 
he went out the house. Me and my mom couldn't find him. So he had my other iPhone, which is the iPhone I'm on right now, right? So off this phone, I tracked that iPhone to find out where he was at. And he was in this building behind my house, right? So my mom went over there like, get out the building. Come to find out, he was over there with like six boys and two girls. So my mama mad because she like, why is you in this building with this, these two girls and there's nothing but boys that don't look right. So she looking around, they punch holes in the wall. They had food all over the floor. They were charging their phones and everything. My y'all, they wasn't supposed to be in the building. The building belonged to the rent people. They went in that building and broke the lock and got in. So now my mama heated. She like, you ain't finna get me put out. You ain't finna get me put out. So, after that, the police got called. He ran. He never come home. He came home 7 o'clock this morning. My mama want to be all nice and let him in. Hmm. So, we go get a COVID test. After the COVID test, we went to the um, food line because I'm finna cook some breakfast. Let me show y'all the breakfast I was finna cook. Some sausages, some orange juice. I was finna make some French toast and stuff. So, I tell my brother, you know, help me out. I'm finna cook breakfast. I need you to take the trash out. He said, like, no, man, I ain't finna do none of that shit. So now you getting rude. So now I say some smart bat. You is finna do that because I finna cook you some breakfast. You can help me out. He wanna walk up and push me. Oh, okay. So what I did was push them back. He wanna fight. I dragged him down them stairs. And we start fighting in the hallway. My mama ran up, broke up the fight. Okay. I go in my mama's car, you know, to cool down to get my head, you know, off everything. My mama come back. Uh, my mama come back out the door to my. We finna get him. We finna get him. I'm like, what's going on? She like, he broke your phone. So I'm thinking, you know, he just talking like he go break my phone or whatever. I, we walk around looking for him. We can find him. I go through the back of the house. I find my phone on the ground, like this, like this. Oh, now nah, I'm heated. He texts my mama phone to my. He finna call the police because I hit him. I did mo. So the police pull up. You think I'm scared of the police? I walked right past them three police cars and told him to come out that motherfucking door because I'm finna whoop his ass. The police like, calm down before we lock you up. I'm gonna give you two warnings. First of all, I don't care about your warnings. And don't tell him to step in the street. My mama's like, go home before they lock you up. Go home. Go home. I'm 24 and I've been dating my boyfriend for five years now. We grew up together as neighbors and were friends for a couple years before dating. I love him so much and I want to marry him. His family is great and I adore them all and he's great with my family too. He also formed a great relationship with my younger sister who's 21. The issue is that I think their bond is too close. My boyfriend and I live together but he spends a lot of time with her. Albeit, I am sort of busy. I'm currently in grad school for engineering so I have to go to my classes. My boyfriend works full time. My sister is currently taking a gap year, but that one year has extended from when she was 18. She comes over when I'm in seminars and classes. They have tons of inside jokes and share the same sense of humor and taste in movies. It makes me feel left out, but when I try to include myself, they both stop being so enthusiastic and act like it's super awkward to have me there. My sister and I were close growing up, but started drifting when I went to uni. When my boyfriend isn't there and I talk to her, she becomes kind of cold and sometimes says rude things. Once she told me to my face that I'm not good enough for him and that he deserves better, which made me cry for a couple days. He also gets her gifts for the most random achievements, like he got her a present for making it through the week even though she doesn't even do anything she currently isn't working or trying to pursue a hobby or interest she's just taking it easy in her own words don't get me wrong i'm glad my boyfriend and sister are friends but my major problem is that my boyfriend tells her everything literally everything he tells her things that he doesn't tell me and talks to her about me and our relationship she knows all of our issues and good parts to a level of detail that i wouldn't even tell my closest friends or parents she even knows the grades i got on my midterms and finals and what i think about my manager i work part-time to contribute to our apartment but also get paid for my research which goes towards our needs as well which i feel is unnecessary for her to know since i didn't tell her myself. I asked him to step back a bit and stop telling her things about me and our relationship, but he was shocked and told me that I'm an asshole for even requesting it. Now I feel guilty, so am I the asshole? I set up nanny cams in hidden spots in our bedroom and living room area in our apartment. Today happens to be my birthday and I just turned 25. Dee, my closest friend, wanted to take me on a day trip yesterday. My boyfriend agreed and said that we'd do something the next day on my actual birthday. I told him that I'd be out from 8 in the morning and I'd be home by 8 or 9 p.m. Dee took me out, but she noticed I was feeling a bit off. I was still thinking about something shady going on between my boyfriend and my sister. I ended up spilling everything while we were eating lunch. Dee was outraged on my behalf and agreed that something was off. She asked if I wanted to cut our day short and drop back home to see if anything was happening and convinced me by saying that it's better to find out today than tomorrow. I realized we could have checked the nanny cams, but for some reason, we forgot about them in the heat of the moment. Honestly, I'm kind of glad I didn't check because I would have started ugly crying in public. I'm guessing most of you know what happened. We drove back home 
home around 4 p.m. I caught them literally in the act. Why were they doing it at 4 p.m.? I don't even know. I just kind of stood there with my arms folded and I hope I had a badass resting bitch face. Although maybe it was more like trying not to cry face. My boyfriend gave me a whole, it was an accident spiel. I just ignored him and started packing my things. Thank God our lease was up for a renewal within a month. He begged me and eventually yelled at me for packing up. The funny thing is, I bought most of the furniture and supplies. So, me being slightly petty, packed as much as I could. Dee helped me and we loaded everything up in her car. We left some stuff I couldn't fit, but I'll go back for that later. The whole time, my sister was sitting stoically wrapped up in a robe on my couch. We went back to Dee's house and I had a breakdown. Dee, the angel that she is, provided me with ice cream and fuzzy blankets. My boyfriend spammed me with calls and texts ringing from, I'm sorry, please forgive me, I love you. It was only one time, two, it wasn't my fault, you should have been around more. We decided to check the recordings and lo and behold, it was definitely not just once. I'm really sad that my sister, who used to bake me cupcakes, and do karaoke with me could betray me like this. My boyfriend, well, he was my first, and in hindsight, he didn't really contribute much anyways. Currently, I've been staying with my friend, and I've locked both my ex PF and my ex-sister. To be honest, it's a huge weight off my back, and I know that this won't affect me forever. I had a first date planned for Friday. I took a nap so that I would be all rested and fresh. I showered. <laughs> I did my hair. I looked good. And then I sat in a restaurant for a half hour waiting for him, and he never showed up. He then called me two hours later to let me know that his dad was in the hospital. And then he called me after that to tell me that his dad wasn't actually in the hospital and that he lied. He then proceeded to leave me about five or six additional voicemails. I would like to present them to you now. And it's Brad again. So it's been, it's been an hour and I haven't really heard from you, um, which I don't think is very cool. Uh, I talked to my friends, and they said I should have heard something from you by now. Uh, I know you're busy with work and everything like that, but, you know, I just basically spilled my guts to you and, you know, was super honest with you, and I just don't think it is fair that you're not calling me back. Um, this is not cool, you know. Um, not cool. I honestly, I'm starting to rethink things and what? I don't know if I don't hear from you in the next like 30 minutes I'm sorry I, I just don't I just don't think it's gonna work out oh. I wanted to call and apologize I'm super sorry I just get really upset sometimes I you know I just haven't been treated very well over the years and you know I you said you were different I thought you were different and you know, I just get a little upset when I feel like somebody's not being honest with me after I've been honest with them because I was honest with you, so I'm just going to hope you're honest with me. But I still haven't heard from you. It's, it's been a little bit. It's been a few hours, and I just feel like you could respect the situation and me. I I'm could. You call me back, but like I said, I just wanted to apologize. I need to yell, and, you know, that's not who I am. Uh, just give me a call and so we can reschedule everything. And once we do, I can explain to you what type of person I am and how honest I am and just cool and calm and all that fun stuff. So I look forward to talking to you and rescheduling uh, another date with you. So, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Nothing says I'm cool and calm like I'm cool and calm. I'm the coolest and I am the calmest. Mm. I think this one's my favorite. It's the peace day resistance. Why haven't you called me back? How oh, I don't know. does somebody do that to somebody else? I told you that this has happened in the past. You said you weren't going to do it. You said it happened to you, and it happened to me. That's why we got along so well. I have left several messages filling my heart to you. All I'm asking for is a callback, and we could go on a date. I could treat you really nice. I really can. I just don't understand girls like you. I thought you were different. I am the same as every other girl. Frightened for my life. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Hi, uh, I was just thinking, um, please do not put any of my information on TikTok. Like, like I said, I'm kind of a sensitive guy. I'm a private guy. And just please, whatever you do, do not put this on TikTok. I would never. That is the last thing that I would ever do. But after you screamed at me and you, like, you know, stood me up and the, like, seven voicemails, I forgot. I forgot. I would hate, you know, that legal get involved. <laughs>
Just please, just don't, don't do it. Just be smart and just don't do it, okay? He's threatening me. All right, uh, call me back. I still haven't heard from you. He's threatening me with legal action, and yet he still wants me to call him back. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't. I can't. I have always been someone who low key didn't mind a bad date because <laughs> I love a good story. And the level of crazy that I am immersed in right now with this man who will not stop leaving me voicemails is just, I should be frightened. I should be very scared for my safety. And yet I am also so amused. And as someone who's in radio, like this is comedic gold. This I couldn't ask for something better. I couldn't make this up if I tried. It is just, mmm. I've got the voicemail to end all voicemails. I kind of don't want it to ever stop. I'm going to I'm gonna play it tomorrow morning on my morning show. Yeah, I'm going to make you guys listen. Because, you know, I just started there and I need people to, like, follow me. Is it a cheap ploy? Mm-hmm. Is it going to be worth it? <laughs> yes! I'll give you a hint. The voicemail is from his mother. He had his, he had his mother call me. She seems delightful. I almost completely forgot if I'm going to exploit my personal life for professional gain, I should really tell you what time to listen tomorrow and where. 710 tomorrow morning on Hot 93.3. You can listen online at hot933hits.com. Please follow the station and me on Instagram. Okay, bye. Famous birthdays fucking ruined my life today. And yes, the fucking website. Basically, I was, sub I was supposed to sign a lease today, okay? And I finally found an apartment. It's so hard to fucking find one as a freelancer. And basically, I was supposed to walk in. I, I'm about to sign the lease. And he goes, I have some bad news. I was like, what the fuck is it this time? What the fuck is it this time? And he's like, basically, I Googled your name yesterday. And something called Famous Birthdays popped up. I didn't know that you had a social media account. It says that you're a TikTok star. And to my knowledge, um, there's someone called Jake Paul and Bryce Hall. First of all, I hate that that rhymes. And he's like and basically um they both got themselves into a lot of trouble with the neighborhood because of you know their social media stars they do a lot of partying and stuff like that so unfortunately i'm not gonna give you that lease because i don't want you to do the same things that they did and i don't want to get into any kind of legal trouble are you fucking kidding me jake paul and bryce hall and famous birthdays that's what ruined my chances at signing a fucking lease really Ugh. If you and your girlfriend decide to go out for a cute little date night, so you find a spot you've never been to before, you get there, the vibes are good, everything's great, and then things start to go a little bit south when the waitress comes over and she's like, oh my god, you guys are so cute, how long have you been together? So you tell her and she's like, oh, she's like, not for long at all. And you're like, ah, ah, did I hear that shit right? But you know what? I let it go in one ear and right out the other because it is not enough to ruin my night. And then in the middle of us ordering appetizers, she literally grabs Grace's hand like they're at the goddamn altar and she's like, Wow, I love your rings. They're so cute. Wow, your hands are so big. And starts comparing hand sizes with my girlfriend right in front of me. I'm fucking fuming at this point. Grace is uncomfortable. She's not saying anything because she's not confrontational. But you know what? I am. I am confrontational. And just when I thought it couldn't get any worse. Okay. Okay, because we're eating dinner. And Grace's tea is dwindling. And so is my patience. So the just comes over. She fills up Grace's tea glass. My last semester at a certain college, I was assaulted by a football player for walking where he was trying to drive. No, he was 325 pounds, I was 120 pounds. While unconscious on the ground, I lived a different life. I met a wonderful young lady, she made my heart skip and my face red. I pursued her for months and dispatched a few jerk boyfriends before I finally won her over. After two years, we got married and almost immediately she bore me a daughter. I had a great job and my wife didn't have to work outside of the house. When my daughter was two, my wife bore me a son. 
My son was the joy of my life. I would walk into his room every morning before I left for work and doted on him and my daughter. One day, while sitting on the couch, I noticed that the perspective of the lamp was odd, like inverted. It was still in 3D, but just wrong. It was a square lamp base, red with gold trim on four legs and a white square shade. I was transfixed. I couldn't look away from it. I stayed up all night staring at it. The next morning, I didn't go to work. Something was just not right about that lamp. I stopped eating. I left the couch only to use the bathroom at first. Soon, I stopped that too, and I wasn't eating or drinking. I sat at that effing lamp for three days before my wife got really worried. She had someone come and try to talk to me, but by this time, my cognizance was breaking up and my wife was freaking out. She took our kids to her mother's house just before I had my epiphany. The lamp is not real. The house is not real. My wife, my kids, none of that is real. The last 10 years of my life are not effing real. The lamp started to grow wider and deeper. It was still inverted dimensions. It took up my entire perspective and all I could see was red. I heard voices, screams, all kinds of weird noises and I became aware of pain. A shit ton of pain. The first words I said were, I'm missing teeth and opened my eyes. I was laying on my back on the sidewalk surrounded by people that I didn't know. Lots were freaking out and I was completely confused. At some point, a cop scooped me up, drag slash walked me across the sidewalk and grass and threw me face down in the back of a cop car. I was still confused. He took me to the hospital and I got CT scans and stuff. I went through about three years of horrid depression. I was grieving the loss of my wife and children and dealing with the knowledge that they never existed. I was scared that I was going insane as I would cry myself to sleep, hoping I would see her in my dreams. I never have, but sometimes I see my son, usually just a glimpse out of my peripheral vision. He's perpetually five years old and I can never hear what he says. My mom always struggled with death. She had a weak immune system and often got so sick that I had to help her to the toilet and wash her body. I was basically her nurse, while my dad always got home late, saying he was working long hours to put food on the table. But I knew he was lying. Back when I was a child, he often took me to his friend, who also had kids. They sat us in front of the TV while dad and the woman went to another room and locked the door. Of course I was curious and sometimes listened at the door, but back then I was too young to understand that my dad was cheating on my mom. But now I was older. So, once my mom had recovered, I finally told her, I know dad is cheating on you. You have to dump him and find someone better. Don't worry, he just goes drinking with his friends after work. No, he's not. Instead of taking care of you, he prefers sleeping with other women. Doesn't that bother you? Well, my mom was in denial. I guess she loved dad too much. But maybe I could open her eyes if I showed her evidence of his unfaithfulness. It wasn't too hard. All I had to do was stand behind him and watch the pattern he used to unlock his phone. At night, I crawled on my knees to his nightstand, took the phone, rolled under the bed, and checked his messages. Turns out my dad is a huge creep. He had a group chat with his buddies where they took photos of random women on the street so they could rate them on a scale from 1 to 10. It was so disgusting. But then I hit the jackpot. Just one hour ago, he had received an SMS saying, See you again tomorrow, my bad boy. Heart, 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 heart. Then I waited for breakfast and told mom. I went through dad's phone last night and found a woman sending him messages. Liar, no one believes you. Oh really? Why don't you show mom some of your SMS? My dad didn't hesitate and I realized that he had already deleted the message. I felt like an idiot. And of course my mom didn't believe me without evidence, but now my dad was seriously angry. You should feel ashamed of yourself spreading lies just to get attention. I don't care what you think. You aren't my dad anymore. I hope you die. That's when he took my laptop and broke it in half. He wanted to scare me, but it didn't work. He was cheating on my mom, and there was no excuse for that. So the next morning, I pretended to go to school early, but actually hid in the back of my dad's car. First, he drove to work like always. There, I had to lie in the freezing cold for eight hours before he finally drove somewhere else. He left the car, and I took a look outside. Dad was going into a house I'd never seen before. Soon after I followed him, there was only one window with the lights on. When I looked through, I saw Dad sitting on a chair. Then a woman came inside wearing a short dress and sat down on his lap. The woman was at least 15 years younger than him. It was gross. And when they started kissing, I started a video chat with my mom. She, um, she said, where are you? I've been so worried. Mom, I'm sorry, but I have to tell you something. What happened? Tell me, I'm fine. But I followed dad and caught him with another woman. Oh, don't worry. Just come home and we will talk about it. Okay, but first I want to show it to you. I held the camera to the window and filmed my dad betraying mom. She kept watching it for another 30 minutes and so did I.
Understood we had no other option. Hey, sorry for calling, but Mom is sick and ran out of money. We would be grateful if you came back to support us. Well, my dad might not be perfect, but he moved back in with us the same day and paid off my mom's debt. He even hired a helper for Mom. But right from the start, I wondered why she was so beautiful. My dad said she was a college student in need for money. But why couldn't he hire an old lady with nursing experience? Well, the girl did her job and took care of my mom. But Dad constantly hit on her, and she always flirted back, even if my mom was in the same room. It must have been painful for her to see them getting along so well, them getting along so well. But she depended on my dad, so he could do whatever he wanted. When I got my report card, Dad took a look at it and freaked out. Why are you such a bad student? Huh? You've never cared about my grades before, so what's the big deal now? Oh, I'll send you to a two-month summer camp as punishment. Ah, now it makes sense. You want me to go away so you can get on with Mom's caretaker. You think I'm stupid? Oh, now you start lying again. Don't you remember where it led last time? Wow, my dad was threatening me to behave or he would leave Mom again. I can't tell you how bad summer camp was. I made no friends and spent eight weeks all by my own, reading the same book over and over again. When I got back home, Dad had some bad news for me. He said Mom had suffered a strong fever and permanently lost her vision. I immediately ran to her bed and hugged her. I couldn't understand why she was so unlucky. To make things worse, Dad told her, I love you, and I will always make sure you're fine, but I have desires, and I'm not interested in a relationship with you anymore. I want to date other women. Maybe marry a new wife. Mom was speechless and stayed quiet. Meanwhile, I screamed, You jerk! Just because mom is blind and depends on you, you think you can get away with anything. Life is complicated, and you're too young to understand it. I love your mom, and I'm well aware of my responsibilities. Mom had tears running down her cheeks. She said, it's okay. Do what is best for you. And then she went back to bed, crying herself to sleep, self to sleep. The next day, I walked into the kitchen. I saw my dad making out with a caretaker girl. I was shocked because she was wearing nothing but a bikini. Things got worse when mom came to make herself breakfast. Dad and his new girlfriend continued kissing each other even though mom was right next to them. It was absolutely disgusting. I said, mom, you have to move out and find a new guy. But I'm blind and always sick. No one wants me. That's not true. You just have to search. There are many guys who would love to have a compassionate wife like you. And maybe you can date a blind guy. But my mom was too afraid of change and continued her miserable life with dad. I recently graduated college and moved out. Now my mom is all on her own, 